And welcome to another episode. Uh, we are back with episode one in chapter three of Strange Town and Golden Ridge. Um, I'm going to shut up. I'm not going to go on. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to the man of the hour, the host, the DM with the most. But it's Mr. Pickles. Yeah, I'm Mr. Pickles, and I am blending into the jungle here. Wow, we're back to the strange town of Golden Ridge. It we're feels back, like it's baby. Been a long time, but it's only been like a few months, I think. A month or two. Yeah. Uh, 83 days. Well, okay, 83 so a days, months. yeah. That's, yeah, <laughs> about two, two and a half months. So if you've joined us and you haven't seen anything that's prior, that's okay, because I will explain everything. We'll go over what's happened to get everybody up to date. Uh, what this is, is it's a modern-based campaign um, using the system Savage Worlds, not to be confused with Savage Pickles. We're using Savage <clears throat> Worlds Adventurers, uh, or the, the most recent one, uh, the, not the Deluxe Explorers, the Adventurers one, Swayed, um, if you're familiar. So we're using a real system this time, and we're doing a modern detective game. This time? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Savage Pickles is a <laughs> nonsense system. That's that's oh. basically a fake system. This one's actually real. People play tested it. They didn't just make it up. They didn't steal it from another, another system. But anyways, so we have two players here who play our detectives and other characters who are investigating the weird things. But before we go into what weird things they've seen, I'm going to give you guys a moment to introduce your characters again. Um, we might not need to do this every session or we might do an abbreviated one but this mm -hmm. is the start of a new adventure mm -hmm. adventure three out of seven for this campaign so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself uh how, how we start with you raf so we won't go we're not going over everything like that we've been through and done i'll do a recap in a moment perfect yeah. um so i'm playing uh a guy um he was the the artist formerly known as travis king um if you've kept up on world events uh, you'll know that that name has become infamous, and so I don't know <laughs> what are the fucking chances. Uh, <laughs> my I sent you the message like I an hour later. So my, <laughs> my Discord blew up. <laughs> like, bro, did you see what's going on? So my character was formerly known as Travis King. If you know anything Ooh. about what happened recently in the world, you'll know that that name is now infamous, and I can no longer use it. I don't know what the chances are, but it happens. So I am no longer going to be using Travis King because I don't want to be associated with that piece of shit. Um, so um, we're not entirely set on where we're going with this character, but we'll refer to him as the Kingsman for now. Um, is it the same dude? Same guy. Same everything. Okay. I didn't want to change characters because I, I feel like we've, We've had a yeah, that'd be a little bit moment. weird, especially with our exactly. Yeah, so same character, but it will make sense RP wise why his name is changing. Um, potentially, if Pickles and I conversations have been on the same page, we'll see. Anyways, all that I'm going on too long. Basically, uh, my character is a f bounty hunter. I keep wanting to say like former because I'm thinking about what you we can say former if you want. We'll, we'll get to what's happened there. Um, he it, uh, is a bounty hunter, which in the current day is called a ba bail bonds agent. Um, so basically, uh, when people will put a bail for uh, the court system um, and prison time and what's not, uh, and then don't pay out or don't show up to court or whatever the case may be, they send out a bail bonds agent uh, occasionally, which is me, modern day bounty hunter. Um, he is kind of a wild child, a uh, bit unpredictable, um, definitely leans towards a, I would say a chaotic good um, alignment, um, you know, saving Verde, saving the, saving the little girl, you know, really focusing on those kinds of things, but definitely with his own flavor. So um, kind of a chaotic good uh, wild child, former Bailed Bonds agent. Um, Anyways, he has a great dog named Titan, who's somewhat trained, work in progress. Um, I've gone on too long. I've talked too, mo too long about my character's name. I'm just going to leave it there for now. You can learn more about uh, King as we go. Uh, off to my, my uh, reluctant new best friend. <laughs> as you can see, Verde is back in his office. Mm -hmm. um, he's glad to be back on the job even if Travis King has not so glad. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
basically Verde is just back doing what he's been doing. He may or may not have picked up a toy or two in the intervening time between this campaign and last campaign. What was he doing before? I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll figure that out. Do what? You said he's back doing what he was doing. What was he doing before that he's back doing? Uh, now? Trying to solve random crimes in inside of the strange town of Golden Ridge. Yeah. Um, tr uh, Detective Verde is a detective for the local police department. He is uh, normally the guy that gets put on the weird shit. And it's kind of driven him around the block. <laughs> <laughs> um, at this point in time, though, he's more wondering if uh, Travis King, changing his name to the Kingsman, uh, has anything to do with him being a super secret spy for Britain. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, what's the Pink Panther song? <laughs> <laughs> But, um, well, you, you know, but, um, you remember the Kingsman but, um, movies, right? I, I have actually never seen those. Yeah, that's basically what they are: super secret spies from Britain that use a uh, a suit store called yeah. the Kingsman. It's such a great name, though. I know I don't like like I love the Kingsman title, and I've tried to use it here and there for a couple different things. We actually almost named the Battle Buddies the Kingsman. Um, but uh, I know it's related to those movies, and I don't know anything about those movies, but it's such a great name that I was like, oh, I oh, can't yeah, just is. not use it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll figure out what new toys Verde has not and been able to pick up in a little bit. Yes. I know that's yes, not indeed. the best introduction, but... <laughs> That's okay. This is a, a weird campaign, and uh, I'm just going to go into a recap of what's happened so far um, yeah. before we get to a little bit of housekeeping of experience and advancements. I just want you guys to be refreshed on what's been happening within this campaign. So we are in a little town in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State, for those who are purchasing firearms in the group. We are in Washington State in a small secluded town called Golden Ridge. I've titled it The Strange Town of Golden Ridge because strange things happen. In the first adventure, The Case of the Bloody Cat, our bounty hunter, Bail Bonds Recovery Agent character, Mr. King here, uh, discovered that a family was having issues that the local police force weren't taking seriously because it was mostly just mild vandalism. Their cat, there were some electromagnetic mild. disturbances around these creatures. And the party found in the first adventure a lot of information about tunnels underneath this strange town, mm -hmm. about weird occurrences. They went to school. They got a degree in this. No, that's not true. They did a little bit of research, though. Um, <laughs> so the first adventure. The we also learned the about first adventure. Oh, no, she spoke to you. Um, no, we, the first we, adventure. We learned about oh, mimes. Oh, I thought you said the librarian lady was one of the mimes. No, I flirted with the librarian, like, <laughs> and, but also <laughs> the we, we learned about. Mime, get her. <laughs> no, we we yes. flirt or we didn't flirt with the mimes. We learned about mimes. Yes, because you guys did some spelunking. You, mimes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> did some spelunking and found that these tunnels have a weird vibe, and that the mimes are that mimes are involved somehow. That there's videos of mimes dancing in parks. You found so much just weird information about this strange town that it eventually led you to discovering where these monsters are coming from. And you went into a hole and you went and killed a group of these things mm -hmm. and you put this to put this to rest. It was uh, in the sewer in a room that had two welded closed doors. So someone had sealed them in and they dug their way out. And that was the And as you were. Ball. As yeah. you were crawling out, then the first rain of the end of summer came down and made crawling out of that muddy tunnel uh, much, much harder. But you guys made it. Yeah. You guys persevered. You got out. And you thought, okay, that was terrible. It was Things are over now. <laughs> and that brings us to the second adventure, The Call of the Squirrel Lord, where you were then sent out by the police chief, both of you, told rather forcibly that you should go on this vacation or bad things might happen. Mm -hmm. You need to leave and enjoy your vacation for a while. And uh, you guys thought that maybe he might be the biggest threat. Uh, There's talks of bugging his office, uh, things like that. But then uh, you got to your vacation and found that things are much, much worse than you anticipated. There are more of these weird fleshy creatures out in the woods. Different um, styles, who, too. Uh, yeah. What's that? Different styles of them. Yes. Um, and I believe the uh, coroner contact for Detective Verde had said that these things were not, like, living creatures. They're like a clay shell with 
blood inside, uh, like a like a gusher, if you will, but humanoid shaped. Um, nice. Not a standard consistency, and definitely not a raccoon. But yeah, you found a lot more of these out in the woods, and some notable things happened to you guys in the last adventure. Um, King, you slept at the bottom of a lake. I slept and, with the fishies. And then woke up with the fishies and swam to the surface. You found a weird rune underneath the water at the bottom of the lake when you decided to swim there randomly. Mm -hmm. And touching it has put it onto your arm. Um, I believe at the end of last adventure, I gave you an edge called Blessing of the Lake. If it's not on your character sheet, you should add that. Because you know it has one effect. You don't drown. At least it that, don't have it. An edge? Yes. A custom edge. Okay. Blessing of the Blessing lake. Blessing of the lake. Adding that. Um somebody else had some interesting situations. In the first adventure, near the end, Detective Verde was visited after he was injured by the creatures in the basement, uh, in that welded sewer room. He uh, got bitten, but when he was at the hospital, he was visited by a mime who gave him a silvery blade. In the second venture, you learned this silvery blade can be controlled by your mind to turn into other things. Mostly because you found a dying mime, splashed some weird alcohol you found at the scene of like a, a, a mime fight that, well, was really one-sided. Uh, the, the enemy just obliterated all the mimes except for one. And uh, she told you a lot of information. Um, she told you a lot of things about uh, weird fates and how the mimes are here to investigate occurrences. They described it as they get a ping, like a radar ping or, or a map ping, if you will, and then they go to investigate. They don't know what's going on, but they know when things happen. And that's when they travel to these locations. Um, overall, I think you've got a rather negative view of mimes from the local public. Um, you found one that had been hung from a tree, dead. Um, the locals didn't seem too bothered by that. Um, am I missing anything? You guys, you you guys did have a bit of a fight near the, at the end, and I think a scene that influenced King a lot was having these monsters attack the cabin that they were staying in, and as he was fleeing, having his dog coming after him, one of them grabbed his dog Titan and clawed it down, ripping into its sides. I'm pretty sure you walked out and you're like, can I use the wild attack function yep. to just shoot three times? Low right. accuracy. I just desperate to hit this piece of shit. Yep. I had to get him off my dog and it worked. I got super lucky dice rolls. I think you hit with two of them missed with the first one. It was enough. <laughs> yeah. It was enough to take down this creature, save your dog. And uh, yeah, you made it out of there. You guys made it out of the hills knowing two things that the, there are more of these weird fleshy creatures and these ones were wearing weird like masks and uh, almost like they had a uh, forest vestiges, like a tribal armaments bark strapped to their legs. Did you talk about the giant monster I found? No, I didn't. Oh uh, I gosh. found the There's giant. So that There's so much. Yeah. There was that and the powder that allowed us to talk to the mime. Yes. Um, God, there's just so much. <laughs> yeah, you went down into a tunnel on your own with your dog, and your dog started talking. But you did yeah. find a massive creature. <laughs> we can't get stuck on little segues <laughs> like your dog's talking to you. Yeah, that, was, went to a tunnel. that was the moment, though. I almost left him. You, <laughs> you found a giant bloated monster with multiple arms and, and like mouths and eyes. It was stuck in a tunnel. Another and it just version kind of... of these things, maybe? Yes. It seemed like a mashed up version of them, and it just died, so you stole one of its giant teeth. Yeah, it died because it got stuck in the tunnel, yeah. And then, yeah, there was the powder we found in the cabin, in the basement, which was locked from inside, uh, like a drug that someone decided to snort, and it allowed uh, him, the cop, and, uh, oh, yeah. The, the option was to eat it, oh, and that made it so both of you were able to see subtitles when the mime talk to you yeah because otherwise the mind wouldn't talk to you so if you were ever curious if this is a strange town it's fucking strange <laughs> <laughs> and uh i believe verde saw a very peculiar girl who gave him very bad vibes wearing a purple coat mm -hmm. um she had said some rather ominous things that led you to believe that she was causing trouble or fixing trouble around here 
and mm -hmm. spirits were a buzz around her, uh, a magnet for bad things to happen, perhaps. Um, the mimes seemed very disagreeable to what the purple coat girl had said to you, but the purple coat girl had said that the mimes were antagonistic to her. She had said they took her best friend. There's still a lot of questions we get asked. The mimes, too bad they have a habit of fucking disappearing. So much. Yeah, as you guys had returned, fleeing from the Squirrel Lord's attack on your cabin, um, you had made it back. You gave the mime a ride back into town, and she just kind of left. And I believe she had said that she's unlikely to see you ever again, but she hopes that your journeys are well. And then she just kind of walked off. Wasn't she recruiting us? Yep. Uh, yes, temporarily. She she had said she was temporarily using you to uh, make up for the lack of a team she had. You were more or less her deputized soldiers. To go do something, except then we got split up. I found a monster. She disappeared. You found a purple coat girl. We ran from squirrels. She came back, helped us run from squirrels, and then was like, okay, bye. Did we ever help her do whatever she was recruiting us for? Nope. It's uncertain. Fuck mimes, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. And so that's a recap of the first two adventures. If you missed those, that's basically everything that happened. Think. There's, There's also a, a little ghost bit... that barks at me, but we'll get into that later. There was a homeless man they met that they just kind of... Yeah, he left me for dead. Bit. He talked about the mimes to them for a bit, Fuck and they people. gave him beer. Um, you dived in the water, and then he wandered off. Yeah. He just um, left me for dead in the lake. But that is the two prior adventures. We're going into the third adventure here, and we have some experience. Um, so I gave each of you three advancements, and we're just going to go through this um, for what you want to do. The first one is the last of your novice level, um, and then the other two are going in your seasoned level. So that just means you have access to more powerful edges. Um, you can change things up a little bit, adding an attribute increase in the seasoned level. But this is to represent that you are no longer novices at dealing with this issue. You've become seasoned to the strange town of Golden Ridge. So, um, start with uh, King here. I think you had some ideas of what you want to spend your three advancements yeah. on. So pull them up here. We're looking at um, Marksman. Uh, if I don't, I don't have them pulled up exactly. I guess I have the book, but I haven't looked them up specifically. What you wrote, if you don't move or attack at a rate of fire greater than one, you ignore two points of penalty from called shots, cover, range, scale, or speed. So basically, um, it just makes it an easier shot for me. Yes. And one of the things I've been not as good about in this system is being clear about what you're doing before you start rolling. Because yeah, this is a system to... where a lot of multi-actions can give you penalties. Marksman makes it so you can ignore those penalties um, for things that are more difficult. Like ignoring two points of penalty from called shots by taking only one shot means it's easier to do those headshots or shoot somebody's arm. Yeah. So if anyone's paying attention, um, I don't really understand how the system works. I just kind of rely on pickles because I haven't picked it up quite yet. Um, but basically, whereas in like D&D &D you have a move and an attack, you don't have that in this. You can do multiple things. It's just going to incur a bunch of penalties if you want to run all the way over here, aim, get cover, shoot. Like you're going to have penalties the more things you try and do within that time frame. Um, so one thing we have to get better at is, okay, I want to move to this location. Okay, you do so. Okay, now I want to shoot. Okay, you do so at this, you know, setting. Okay, now I want to go do this. And he's like, well, wait, hang on. I needed to know this beforehand because you would have had penalties. So that's one it's thing. It's a that penalty we on better. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking Marksman uh, as one bonus. You just want the all one right. for now? Um, do you have two more? You can go okay. through all of them. I didn't know if you were just doing the, the novice. Um, the second one... Um, You'd mentioned Beast Bond? Yep. After diving into danger to save Titan, I want to continue to push our friendship with Beast Bond. Uh, Beast Bond, you wrote as... Beast Bond. Allows you to spend your bennies on your dog. Bennies are like your fortune points, if you guys paid attention to King's Crossing. Um, if you get additional animals, you may spend bennies on them too, but you need to 
have time to bond with them. I don't want more animals. I'm good with Titan, but I'd like to be able to spend Bennies on Titan so that if Titan's ever in a predicament like that again, he'll have some a, a small grace period or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, my third one, um, I was thinking of boosting my agility because I want to increase my reaction time, um, which I base, I'm guessing is based off agility, if I remember right. Yeah, agility is the role you would do for any like immediate reactions to things. Um, it also governs some how fast certain skills progress, like athletics, um, uh, shooting, stealth, those things. Perfect. So it has a net benefit of making it easier to level other skills while also being the go-to for dodge or uh, react to things quickly. I'm trying to... Is there a... I can't... I'm sorry, it's been a while. Is there a uh, initiative... Um, initiative oh, goes with cards. cards, and we don't have anything that would boost that or affect that at all. Uh, there is an edge, I believe, to make it so you draw twice. Um, okay. But I'm just saying, like, agility, boosting my agility wouldn't affect my initiative because that's based on a card draw, not a roll off your proficiency. No, okay. but it would be your reflex save, more or less. Okay, perfect. I'm still I'm still thinking that. Instead of D6 now, I'd like to increase it. So those are my three. So All right. My um agility is going to a D eight. Correct. Okay. And then I'm adding two edges. Spending a lot of time uh focused on accurate shots. Getting those uh long range shots too. Yeah. Um yeah. Because marksman applies to multiple areas, not just called shots. Uh, that's it's two points of penalty for basically anything that isn't a multi-attack shot. Um, so as long as you're doing one shot, you get two points off. I, in that case, you should always be doing a called shot. If you can find a called shot, that I'm pretty sure like arms are a minus two penalty. So if you were to do this, you could always have it at a standard. You could just shoot their arm if you want to go for their gun or something. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that up. If that's something I'm gonna be using more, I want to have that at quick access. Oh, well, here here's one thing. So on page ninety three, range attacks, uh, a medium range. The second uh, number in any of your range entries, your okay. range entry should be a number slash a number slash ninety three. Yeah, ninety three. Okay. What are we What are we um, talking about? Sorry. Range penalties. Um, your okay. short range, the first number in your uh, three numbers, mm -hmm. is no penalty, but your medium range is minus two. So if you do one shot, you can essentially shoot normally at your second, like range increment. Okay. Okay. Um, and of course, your long range instead of a minus four, it'd be a minus two. Um. So for rate of fire, one is one bullet fired, two is five bullets fired. Can I fire up to four bullets then? Or is that um, not how it works? An important thing to note there is that the rate of fire is how many rolls you do but the number of actual bullets spent for the number of rolls gets more inefficient as you shoot more bullets right okay so basically um, you're shooting five bullets with a chance to hit twice yeah correct cool cool makes sense um i know there's something here on um I love the in-game manual for this, where it has the basic edges. I pull it up, and I'm like, oh, Marksman, and it just says, see page 43. All right, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but Worthless. what I can do is I can add that to my character and then just copy from the book into my character. Yeah. So, um, so a called shot uh, to the hand is a minus four. Head or vitals is a minus four. Uh, limbs are a minus two. So essentially, you can always shoot for a limb, like the, the an arm or a leg, with no penalty, as long as you use your marksman. And if it's a headshot, it's a minus two instead of a minus four. Yeah, which that makes I will it take. easier to do those specific marksman shots. Um, requirement seasoned. Are we seasoned now? We are seasoned. Yes. Okay. You are uh, two of your advancements count as seasoned, so you're able to do B spawned as your last novice, and then okay. the other two will be your seasoned. Perfect. Okay. That should take care of my character. I will stop taking up all our time. All right. And that brings us to Verde. Um, you had looked at a couple options. What were you thinking <clears throat> you might want to do? So I think I'm going to go with uh, calculating. It's an interesting one. That's actually kind of the opposite of where uh, King is going. Calculating makes it so if you draw a five or lower on your cards, 
you ignore a minus two penalty to all, basically everything. So it makes it so if you're like the last person, more or less, or if everybody rolls poorly and you still get a five at your first to go, then you get an immediate, uh, you reduce your penalty by minus two on, I think, everything, including... Um, so basically that's just like he's taking his time to see all the options, consider everything, and then acting. Yes. Um, yeah, and it can be for multi-action. So if you get a five or lower, you can do two shots with no penalty. And a third shot with all of them having a minus two penalty. Rather than a minus four. Nice. Um, so that's a good one to remember. It's a five or lower. Um, calculating. So I need to pull up my sheet here. Um, and and I, this needs to go under edges and hindrances, right? Correct. Um, but just worth noting for my DM style, I have my own um, notepad like versions of everybody's character sheet. So your character sheet is whatever works for you. Um, as long as you know what you have, I don't. I don't really care how you handle it. Um, but worth noting for Verde, you also got a new edge from the last adventure, chosen by the mimes. Though, unfortunately, I don't think you really figured out anything beyond that the mimes have chosen you, as opposed no, to no idea. Yeah, King King has breathe underwater. You have chosen, but it is still an edge. Something important that has happened to you. Um, Okay, so calculating. Uh, what was the other Chosen one? By the mimes. I need to write that down. All good. No matter if you write it down or not, you will have it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to put it in there so I don't forget it. And then I have two more, right? Correct. Okay, so nerves of steel. Nerves of steel. Uh, that's that's a very useful one if you get injured, which you are the only one who has been injured. <laughs> uh, ignoring one penalty uh, from wounds is very important because if you're rolling to uh, resist dying or resist taking more wounds, having wounds makes that worse. So being able to ignore, <laughs> ignore that one penalty point makes it so you can keep going much more effectively. So it's very much a spiral once you start taking injuries. Um, nerves of steel, okay. Um, and what did you want for your final advancement? Um, danger sense. No, no, no. Double tap. Let's go with double yep. tap. Okay. Double tap. Both of those are very interesting. Um, I do like that you've taken double tap because that goes sort of opposite of King here. Um, you're shooting more, trying to get more bullets out there. King is trying to shoot more accurately using less bullets. Um, he does so have that, the slower gun, doesn't he? Um, he's got a hunting rifle and a pistol, and I believe you've got a pistol and a shotgun. For now. Um, <laughs> yeah, for now. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so calculating nerves of steel, double tap. Um, it sounds to me like both of you have been preparing for very bad things to happen. <laughs> Getting focused on whatever is in the woods to start coming to you. Yeah, I imagine. So. <laughs> um, okay, so we are starting a new adventure. So we are wiping our bennies clean, and we are starting at our standard. I do allow you guys to stack your bennies, as we've said before. Um, so as the adventure goes on, you will keep stacking. But for now, Fred, you should have two bennies, and Wrath, you should have three bennies. Nerves of steel, calculating, and double tap. You. You'll have to remember the calculating. Um, because I might remember that, but um, double tap. Any weapon with a rate of fire of one can fire two shots without needing, and can fire two shots without needing to manually reload. That makes you much more likely to hit and do damage, which is... Uh, yep. You can double tap more than once if you perform a multi-action. So you could do two double taps if you if you got a five or lower with no penalty. A five or lower That's initiative, I mean. As long as your gun has four shots, I guess. Um, okay, uh, you're back, uh, Rath? All right. So moving forward then, if we're all ready, 
Uh, we're going into Adventure 3. Several months have passed since the adventures that you have done before. The, the prior two adventures happened very close together at the end of summer. And a few months have passed. You've been allowed to do whatever you're doing in your real life. And the question is, what have you two been up to? What have you been trying to accomplish? What is, what is something that's sort of happened to you? Um, do either of you want to go first, or shall I pick on somebody? Um, let's start with Faraday then. Yeah, uh, it's been mostly normal business. Uh, just the uh, random shit that's been happening. Of course, uh, Frederick Verde, being the World War II nut he is, has been searching for um, old World War II memorabilia, whether that be guns, helmets, gear, tanks, that sort of stuff. That makes sense. And he's a bit obsessive on Just this. a little. Um, you have the hindrance of a quirk where you have a World War II obsession. So this is something that's you do this probably every night. Come home and you check the papers or go online and see if there's any postings. The area itself does have like a lot of historical buffs, engineers, people who are very much interested in, well, military stuff. And there's a lot of eccentricity out there. And there is even like a model engineers club that operates within the town limits pretty pretty actively. If you wanted to see small steam trains working, you, know, you could find it. But anyways, so you are able to find something mm -hmm. you think that nobody else is going to find. Whenever mm -hmm. there's like World War II guns are here, people come in there quick. They're like vultures. You have to get mm -hmm. there at like the crack of dawn when they open to, to get whatever you want. But Something struck you about a recent house that's being sold. Mm -hmm. Historical display mm -hmm. is the phrase that got you over there. And uh, the entire like entry posting isn't that great. Uh, it's terrible advertising, but that's perfect for you. Because you get over there, and uh, it's some like dude that looks like he works an office job. Um, like he's wearing a button-up shirt and a tie and everything and uh he's at this rather nice home um it's out in the hills a little bit but it's a rather nice home that has clearly not been tended to in a while the yard is like grown up and everything and uh yeah he, he meets you at the door and he looks at his phone and he's like uh would you be verde yes that would be me uh, you're the only one here to see my father's estate so uh really i guess you yeah, uh, I guess not many people wanted to deal with this. A lot of the locals said he was a bit difficult, but um, yeah, I guess my lack of knowledge of my own father is proof of that. Um, so welcome in. I'll give you a little bit of a show around of whatever you like. And just stop me when you see something you want. He starts to lead you through the house. And um, for the most part, it's the house of an old man who died alone. Uh, it's a bit of a bachelor pad. It's a little bit sad. There's furniture if you wanted it, but it's like it's been used for a long time. What stands out to you is in his man cave, there is a display of guns. Mm. And not just guns, but World War II guns. Mm. And a lot of them. Um, mm. A lot of it is Lugers. It looks like he was collecting Lugers primarily. And then from there, it looked like um, the MP family, the machine pistols. Mm -hmm. But as you approach these ornate cabinets, you can kind of look around and say, um, let's see, how many things? So, there are, let's see. Are we adding that money bonus you said about, told us about? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, you guys have go. saved about $2,000 $2, each in, in like savings during this time. Um, let's see how I count. Uh, there are a little bit over 60 guns here, mm -hmm. with the vast majority being these Lugers that he apparently collected. Mm -hmm. Um, the guy looks at this and, uh, he says, I don't know much about this stuff. Um, personally, I don't really feel good about having a bunch of Nazi guns. So, um, I don't know. Uh, what seems fair to you? Uh, like a thousand bucks? For for, for the cabinets and everything within them? Okay. 
I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do you a solid here. Okay. So the only way these guns would be here is if somebody brought them back from World War II. Which means your father either was did it himself or knew a bunch of guys that did and collected them from them through the years. These guns are like priceless, my friend. Especially those Lugers. If you really want to get rid of them, I will take them all for a thousand. But I'm telling you right now, they are premium. Really? A bunch yes. of shitty guns? Uh, hold, okay. hold up. Maybe you don't know what you're actually seeing here. And I'm not an expert on guns, as I said. I could care less about these pieces of shit. But uh, look at this one. He He brings you over to uh, one of the cabinets that is a little bit harder to see, actually, uh, like obscured when you initially entered the room. It's in the corner a little bit. Um, this one has two... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this properly. I'm going to butcher it. Moshin Carabiner 42s. Uh, they look like, uh, like machine guns-ish, um, but they're both heavily rusted over. And one of them is missing uh, some key parts. It looks like somebody like melted off the handle and the trigger, of course, as well as like the undercarriage of it all. It looks like somebody just like melted that part off right underneath. So you have part of a machine gun and then one that looks like it's pretty rusty. Oh, you're talking about the machine gewehr forty two. Yes, that's that is actually what I meant. I guess. I uh -huh. got you. If I'm. Oh, I, now I gotta look this up. I have pictures. If Hang on. Pictures. If you get a picture, throw it at me. Um, let's see, where'd you go? Where'd you go, 42? 42. A Martian carabine? No, that's... That's a carabine. <laughs> Martian carabiner is like a carabine. Like a clip. Hold things on. I'm probably You're holding me in suspense thing. here. Pickles. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, that's a STG 42, the uh, the prototype to the 44. Yes, there are two of those. One is heavily rusted, and one oh. has the entire undercarriage like melted off. Damn. Okay. <clears throat> I gave you the, the, the I gave you the spiel. I'm going to take them all for a thousand. Okay, that, that would be amazing. Uh, right, I, I cool. don't want to deal with these. A thousand dollars for the cases and everything in them. Yep. Let's do it. Here you go. I brought I'm... cash. Yeah, I, I was just about to say, I'm pretty sure your character would bring cash to these <laughs> instances. Like, you want to yeah, be able it... to, like, outbid somebody immediately if they're like, no, 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 I'll take the Thompson. You know, be like, yep, no, yep. fuck you. I've, I, I have actually money now. <laughs> So, um, I I am going to be very very um, interested. So it, it's it's all just Luger's and these things, or is there other stuff too, as well as like uh, MP40s? Um, as you're processing all this, you're taking account of things, and I'm presuming that at the end of my spiel here, you will be back at your house uh, with all of the guns and any of the cases that you want. You could take them, you could dispose of them, but. Um, you are basically emptying out that part and uh, the guns are free. It's the cases you're paying for in a sense. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're very so nice there, cases. Hardwood and everything. There are a total of 51 pistols. 50 of those Holy are shit. Lugers. 50 Lugers. It's like uh, more than it exists anymore. <laughs> th there's an obsession here and he collected 50 Lugers. The 51st gun though is an Astra 600. You're gonna have to send me a picture of that one too. Yes, I have. Oh, I have. I have pictures of all the guns. You have no idea what you've stepped into, pickles. I thought I. <laughs> well, I was prepared. So, um, it's a cute little pistol, actually, Spanish semi-automatic pistol, um, oh. from World War II. Um, it's the only one that's of, like, of that type. Um, I'm just gonna grab just as I go. Um. It's a very smooth looking pistol. It's one that it I, I, I look at that and I think that's what a secret agent would use. It looked like a macro. Kind of. 
<laughs> there are five rifles, um, and because I want to mispronounce everything, it's a Gewer 98. Uh, they look like this. Gewer they were, 98. They were in their own case, um, and there's some ammo for them. Made by Mauser, it's a bolt-action rifle. Yep, uh, it's the uh, carbine. Yeah, the, you you guys would know it from like Call of Duty is the Car ninety eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys in our audience here. Um, I got that reference. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is an MG eighty one, but <clears throat> it's basically only the barrel and um the body of it. It's missing so much of it. It's almost not even complete. That's World War One, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a German belt-fed machine gun by Mauser. Yep. <laughs> Good old Mauser making <laughs> guns. <laughs> now we have something to mount on top of the rat's cheap. <laughs> it has no functional parts. So you're just like pew 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 pew. We're just saying it. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Sorry, the belt clogged there. That <laughs> was no belt, but I pretended. Um, and the rest of them, there are four different MP guns. Um, oh boy. They're all basically the same, but minor variations. And it's only an expert that would be able to tell them apart, I think. Um, but uh, you have one of each, the 1835, 38, and 40. Um, uh, and yeah, mm. that, 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 it's all essentially, they look like the 40, but some of them have like a small, like, uh, divot. Like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna. Go the MP18 show. looks nothing like the 40 though. It's got a little bit more wood, but okay, I'll post. It also feeds out the side. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> oh, that just did the 40 twice. Um, no, it's an 80. Too, the... too bad the people, the people can't see these. No, <laughs> no one else can see this. This is just us having our own conversation. Our Maybe own conversation if, about the guns. If I edit this correctly, during the st while they're blabbering, I'll put pictures on so you guys can see it. If I edit this correctly, this, we'll try. This will be nice. I'm getting better at my edits, so. So there's a I'm variety sure... of these machine pistols. Yeah. Um, they, they have, um, I mean, the, the difference between the 18 and the 40 is pretty big, but the 38 and 40, very, yeah. very similar. Um, like, the 38 just has, like, a guard sort of between the clip and the trigger whereas the 40 took that away for some reason and it's like well if that's really the difference how is that two points of difference so, well i guess that would be two points but um so this is an interesting treasure trove you found and we'll get to king in just a moment there's just <laughs> one more thing about this trove as you're uh -oh. settling into your home on a um it's like November 3rd or something, we'll say, as uh, we're reaching the end of the recap. You're looking at one of the Lugers, and you notice it has an odd symbol on it. It's very, very faint, but it reminds you of the sigil that was burned into King's arm. Oh, shit! <laughs> and, and as you move over maybe to grab your phone or something or or away from your your desk where you're working you you walk by the crate that a lot of the lugers were stored in and you notice with your alertness that there's a little book wedged into like a, an odd corner like it's been wedged into the crate itself and it's crate colored so you, you didn't really notice it all right i'm gonna check out the book you, you pull it up. It's like a small journal of some kind. And as you flip it open, yes. it's definitely a journal. And it's definitely in German. And you kind of flip through and you can sort of piece together a few things before you go to get some Google Translate. Um, it's a German journal, possibly about dreams. And when you flip to the last page, there's one sentence in English. The final sentence in English, in the same handwriting says the mimes are not people they're m and it looks like it's m and then like an either either an o or an e or, or, an or, I. or there's another like circular letter letter after it but then it immediately scr I. scratches off what's that a cursive i could be a cursive i actually yeah 
Um, they're not people, it, it, they're it's mimes. Just, it's meh. <laughs> There's a little this emoji, emoji face strange. drawn on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as it's like <laughs> scribbling off, then it does an immediate like yeah, 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 face <laughs> and then scribble off. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it, it just it's like they were writing and then they closed it and just stuck it in that crate. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what you're dealing with um, and what you're going to be dealing with as we start this adventure. Meanwhile, Trav, or the, the guy, ki a king, Kingsman. guy king, guy, king. Uh, guy Kingsman, Kingsman. Um, uh -oh. You don't have bad luck, and no. you don't find evil mime books hiding around. I appreciate What have that. you been doing? Uh, I quit my job. Okay. What have uh, you been doing? I became a gun for hire. Um, I would like to join a shady organization that has basically been teaching me, like, CQB, uh, basically, like, um, oh, God, what's that Merc company that had to change their name because they were under so much eat from all the bad shit they were doing blackwater yeah yeah um oh, man, right <laughs> i think so yeah it was blackwater wasn't it fred do what okay uh it was blackwater i believe i didn't um, hear you hear I, I you're talking at once i didn't hear you yeah it's all right um so basically i'm gonna join like a shady organization like that because i need civilian cqb like training military type training again um and i need access to resources to use uh for that so basically i've become a hitman or a gun for hire um not so much taking jobs just fighting people really but i'm using it for the training so that i can hunt down aliens or monsters or whatever these things are hunting down aliens that's hilarious I, they they scratched my dog, okay? Now I'm going Punisher. They attacked my family. I'm going after all of them. I don't know if there would be any, like, uh, shady organizations in, in the sense that, like, they're running covert ops. But I do think there would be a lot of opportunities for um, groups of people who are maybe perhaps a little paranoid yeah, or who have real groups. experiences. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Militia yep. groups that are, like... Yeah, the aliens exist, and some people being like, they've never seen an alien. I have. Right. And I'm just like, I might not believe everything they do or, you know, fall into all the stuff that they do, but I'm using it for the resources, the training, you know, so on and so forth. So, basically, I'm changing my name from Travis King to Kingsman, just the moniker Kingsman. Um, one, because real-life reasons. Two, because I am going dark. Uh, basically, I want to be just a weapon. I'm going the Punisher route, which I know is cliche, but basically, if you have any idea what the Punisher story is, I'm going that route. But for aliens. Yeah. Um, Alien monster hybrid things. Yeah, you're probably not getting a lot of, like, hit jobs in the town of Golden Ridge, but um, there may be, like, jobs where people ask for somebody to be intimidated um or get a little bit of vengeance for somebody cheating on them or selling their dog um yeah it, it, even like uh bodyguard jobs basically just taking any you know odd jobs i mean you can be working as like a bouncer at a place or you know different things not yeah. that i'm the biggest guy but i'm becoming really good at firearms training is basically the route that i'm going that makes sense um and you've also made a friend because despite your darkness here, you are still charismatic. You still are reliable and you still are loyal um, to a fault. But here it helps you a little bit. Um, so why don't you tell me about your new friend? Yeah, you got somebody who's like a contact that knows something or has a connection to supplies of some kind. Maybe they're a part of your group here. You want to tell me about? Yeah, uh, it's... Um... Sorry, I'm just like throwing this at you because I'm like just no, improvised. We talked about it, yeah, a little bit. Um, oh, don't throw yourself. At me. Remember, uh, remember that girl who was attacked by aliens? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
it's her and she's the criminal kingpin now. No, I'm totally kidding. Um, <laughs> um no, I, I was considering going a different route, like going with something like a, a dog trainer and maybe they're working with Titan or something or, um, but I think I'm going to stick with what we originally discussed, a criminal element weapons dealer. And the reason being is I need access to guns and ammo for what I'm doing. And I don't trust the cops. So I can't you rely on my cop friend who's also told me that he's unreliable. So uh, I'm going to go to a different... Like, if I can't go to the cops, I got to go to somebody else. And so I went to the criminals. And so... Probably a lower level, like, guns dealer. Doesn't really mess with anything outside of that. Just does their gun running. Um, probably small time, so I'm not getting, like, RPGs and tanks. But I'm getting, you know, 9 mil ammo to fill up my inventory. I'm maybe getting, like, a, a submachine gun, you know. Um, stuff like that. And they might have their ear to the ground. So they can hear about things going on in the city, like, oh, you know, what are the cops up to? They would be able to give me little intel, little tidbits here and there. Or, um, hey, people have been complaining, like in this, you know, suburb where the cops don't really go or something, people are complaining about people going missing or whatever. The cops aren't doing anything about it. And I'm like, hmm, aliens. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's the route I'm going with that one. All right, that, that works for me. Um... Yeah, a criminal guns dealer would be somebody who would get you good discounts probably on guns that have been stolen and then fenced and then brought into his distribution. Um, so you'd probably get good discounts on small common firearms. Um, you'd also probably have access through him to things like submachine guns or things that might be a little less than legal but might be stolen from shipments. This kind of contact will tell you when he has deals mm -hmm. and he he'll likely be like hey i've got a shit ton of silencers you into silencers at all got all sorts of ones that should fit multiple guns that kind of thing but you can also contact him with specific requests be like is this something you have on hand and he'll tell you if it is and how available it is if that makes sense yeah um i think this would also be a person who knows guns of those calibers um, so if you were to bring guns like that and be like, what can you tell us about this? He might be able to provide you some information. Perfect. Um, all right. So that brings you up to about November 3rd. Um, you guys have both, um, been living your lives, finding interesting things happening to you. Uh, did anybody want to make any purchases in those two months? Are you buying any weapons that hadn't been mentioned to me or that you want to mention on stream? Uh, I don't think so. I wanted to see how possible it was through my new contact to get an H and K MP five retail price three hundred. Yeah. Uh it is available. Yeah. What about M sixteen retail price four hundred? Uh yeah. Alright. I will be purchasing that and I couldn't find information on at least in the core rule book on uh, ammo and such for this? Uh, I... Are we just, as long as I have money, I'm funding my ammo? Yeah, that's okay. that's how I'd like to run it. Um, anytime that you're trapped somewhere or you're going on an expedition is when I will start to get a little anal about ammo. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, when you're close to home base, I assume in the price you've purchased a few clips. Mags. Mags. You purchase a few mags, and when you use them between adventures, you refill them. Um, and that's negligible, but um, I'll always assume you probably have two reloads on you. So three total mags. Mags. Okay. I'm going to say clippies so bad. No. <laughs> it's just I prefer you just say clips. You have three clippy cloppies. No, oh my God. <laughs> Let's go adventuring. No. Um... Okay, so uh, how we're starting this out is it's been, it's November 3rd. Um, you've probably dealt with some things. Um, and for you, Kingsman, um, your contact has, uh, well, you guys have been sort of 
friends at this point, and you did something to make it so he owed you a favor. What what did you do that made it so he owes you a favor? Um, probably. Ooh, I wonder if this is even how I was making money. Maybe I was killing criminals and just taking their money. <laughs> um, so maybe, maybe I was taking out a criminal element. Uh, like they were harassing because I've still got the chaotic good alignment type deal, so I wouldn't be doing evil actions. But if a criminal is like doing criminal things to people, and I go and take them out, and they've got like ten grand on them, I'm like, okay, like that'll pay my rent. Um, so maybe that's just how I've been funding my uh, adventures. But um, I'm thinking maybe one of the people I took out was like his boss, which allowed him to move up, and he and then he was like, whoa, whoa, don't kill me, like I I'll give you guns, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> just don't kill people and be bad he's like okay i won't i was like cool okay yeah so he he has offered to take you out to this bar that has this uh very very uh popular new brew um sort of thing is i'll, I'll like as a, a token of good like favor you know take you out we'll bring you to the bar i'll pay for your for your drinks um We'll get to know what our new objectives are, that kind of thing. And would Kingsman be agreeable to that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, at this point, he's probably, you know, baseball cap, worn down low, like kind of staying incognito, keeping an eye on his surroundings. I'm not alert, but uh, you know, trying my best. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're going to the bar, and it's a, it's probably about, um, we'll say, seven eight o'clock let's say eight o'clock and verde this is the about the moment you you saw this book and you've looked through it a little bit um well you had a plan a plan i didn't remind you of but you need to go do the most exciting of detective work you need to go look into illegal alcohol operations yay you see, the case is that there's a rumor going around town that some brewer is making alcohol and selling it without a license. Oh, no. How dare they? It's unlicensed brewing, and they're selling it to pubs. But the thing is, it's very difficult to find out like, if they're selling it because they always use a code word. The thing is, you have a tip from your boss that uh, there's this specific Irish pub that's uh selling it it's what so that is selling this this uh alcohol okay. and so that's why on this november 3rd night you're heading on your way over to an irish pub and uh, i'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna move us over to a little map um if i know how something All right, you guys should be able to see pub. If not, I will have to fix things. Is it a black screen for you guys? Uh, yes. Yes. I forgot all the color settings or light settings. I should say we need. Our screen is visible. There we go. Okay. So you guys should see scene of a Irish pub here now. Yeah, I see it now. All right. Um, you can place yourself wherever you like. Um, presuming that, uh, we'll say, King probably shows up first, unless, um, Verde, you wanted to show up earlier. I mean, I'd probably talk, try and find somebody at normal business hours, because I'm just that kind of asshole. Okay, we'll we'll say you showed up first then. <laughs> um so you you either pocketed that journal or you left it at your station. Um you can take whatever you want. Um I'm presuming you know how to outfit yourself. Um and you head off to this bar. Um you show up a bit before King does. You don't know he is coming here, so that's impossible to know. Um but you walk into the bar. Um it's very popular and it's very active tonight. And that's probably part of the reason why you planned to go tonight. It should be active enough that maybe you can find some evidence from people, from the bartenders, what have you. Um, and while there's no tokens here, there are a lot of people. You can find a table if you want, and you can find a uh, 
like a chair or two at the the bar if you want. Um, but otherwise, uh, what would you like to do, Verde? Um, I guess I'm gonna sit here and uh, scope around, not make it obvious that I'm here to, you know, search people or figure out what's going on here. I'm just gonna sit there and have a drink. At the uh, bar or a table? Bar. All right, bar. You find yourself a stool. You sit down. A uh, bartender. Uh, well, actually, the only bartender. There's several waitresses, but there's only one bartender, and she, with her red hair and very mischievous-looking expression, looks at you and asks, "What can I get for you tonight?" Uh, you got any four roses? I will see what we have. She taps the table, um, and it's clear that they do have four roses. All right, cool. I'll take a uh, glass of that, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, she brings a glass to you, um, sets it down for you. Uh, anything else that I can get for you? <clears throat> Not right now. Right now, I just want to um, sip on this. I'll, I'm sure I'll be wanting more. All right, just flag me down. I know we're busy, but if you get my attention, I will bring you more drinks. Uh, Appreciate it. She moves on to somebody else. Um, a waitress moves past you rather briskly, trying to get more drinks out to people. Seems most people are drinking beer here tonight. Um, not a lot of hard liquor going about. Um, and that's when you see at the door, uh, King has entered with a uh, comrade. Comrade has like blonde hair. Looks like a rather agreeable like sort of person. He instantly recognizes me. Um, I well, suck yeah, at this. <laughs> you've got alertness. Uh, you can see King uh, underneath his baseball hat. Uh, I. Unless you want to act, King, you can act. Uh, if you want to ignore King, you can. I mean, Verde. I I will be ignoring King because I'm not here for him. <laughs> yet i pull my gun <laughs> shoot it no i'm just kidding <laughs> um i i'm not alert i don't have all that but i am uh but, 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 but i am uh viable and loyal you may roll notice if you want to have a chance to see um your comrade here he is myself oh so i haven't actually noticed him he noticed me Yes. Okay. You may roll notice if you like. I would like to roll notice. D6. Uh, okay. I'm trying to remember everything. So it's going to roll, and it's also going to roll a wild die, right? Correct. And there's no pickles love on this roll. Correct. Roll. I got a five and a one, and I need over a four to be successful? Correct. Okay. So yeah, you enter through the door, and you see uh, Verde at the bar. You both lock eyes for a brief moment. And then he's looking away, pretending to, or like actively ignoring me, right? If that's what you want to do, Faraday. Actually, I feel like you guys are just locked staring at each other now. I mean, we are now. Are we just sitting next to was... <laughs> No, we. He's are at the door. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna we're yeah. gonna go with that. Okay. Um I am going to understand that he's ignoring me, not sure why. Could be like maybe he's undercover, maybe he's trying to do something. I don't want to blow his cover. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move past. Plus I don't want to draw attention to my friend because that's a cop and that's a criminal. <laughs> so uh <laughs> I'm not I'm just gonna move past. I'm not even gonna engage. Uh and I'm gonna go for this spot with my buddy taking the one next to me. Yeah, that works. Um yeah, you guys both sit down. He says, oh, yeah, I absolutely love this bar. Uh, always a good place to go to. Uh, whenever I'm in Golden Ridge, it's where I go to spend my time. No been here. Not a bad spot, though. Yeah, well, there's not much else to do in, in Golden Ridge. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> You're not wrong there. I mean, there's plenty going on in the city, but not much you really want to be a part of. Right. Right. Uh, Wendy, Wendy, the bartender comes on over. Um, she glances at you with a air of suspicion in her eyes. But I perhaps look away, looking to the crowd. 
You you look away as she tries to look at you. He says, uh, "Yeah, uh, beer for my my friend and I." And she says, "Will that be one beer or two? He says, "Yeah, two beers, obviously. I'm not sharing a beer, Wendy." And she uh, giggles and, and heads off to get more beer. Um, I want to. Uh, I I want to keep an eye on Verde. Yeah, you could you could I'm, see I'm him from here. The guy next to you, Verde. Um, I'm going to make him <laughs> visible. Is a little old man. Uh, he's clearly balding, top of his head. <laughs> you can zoom in if you really want to I see. Thought this that was Bernie at first, or Biden. I was like, "What?" It's not. Yeah, no, that's not. What I see. <laughs> I'm not. making a non-political game. Uh, Here's Biden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when I was way zoomed out, I just like looked over. I was like, "What the fuck?" And <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a. A uh, giddy old man who taps the table and says, uh, b- "Bartender, bartender, <laughs> please. Uh, I'm looking for the big boy special." Oh and she says, "Oh, yep, I know what you need." This is a hundred percent someone you would definitely see at this bar. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing like a suit, but it's one of those suits that's seen better days. There's like little tears at it where it's like, "Huh, does he live in this suit?" Um, but he seems rather giddy, and he turns to you, Verde, and he says. Uh, you come here often? Uh, every once in a while. What about you? It, it's the best bar. They serve all the beers that I like, and they have some hitters. They have some hitters. They do. Just some? Oh, well, compared to other bars, you know, there, there's just some bars that have good beer and some that have hitters and some that are just garbage and they water it down, obviously. Yeah, I suppose so. What's your name, stranger? Verde. Verde. Verde, like the color. It's a very fancy, fancy name you have. <sighs> yeah, well, my family wanted my last, our last name to be fancy when uh, we started out, so now it's fancy. Uh, makes sense to me. Wendy! Wendy! Is it coming? It, it, you can clearly see she's ignoring him while she's pouring something. <laughs> <laughs> Have have you had the big boy special? I have not. It's life changing, life changing. I say. Is it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't know yourself until you've had the big boy special. It's a brew so potent and powerful, it'll bring you to a new world. <laughs> Bert is like, ah, shit. <laughs> Who makes it? It's gonna be a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long hangover yeah. <laughs> adventure. Dun, 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 dun. So who makes it? Oh, uh, <laughs> hell if I know. Uh, it's one of those local brews, you know, Wendy, <laughs> where where you don't really ever know who made it, just that. It's at a bar, and you're drinking it, and it's the best thing you've ever had. I didn't know we had that many breweries around here. I have, I've, I've had the, the green one. It was very good. Uh, but the red one was even better. <laughs> the Matrix? Verde is kind of just blinking at him like, I understand nothing. Blue pill the, or red pill? The lady, uh, Wendy, the waitress, or bartender, I should say, brings him a mug. <laughs> filled with what sort of looks like beer consistency, but it is bright red. It's like if you made a primary red beer. And he excitedly puts his, his wrinkly little hands on it and grabs both hands, brings it up to his mouth, and just starts drinking. I'm going to look at Wendy. So, uh, he seems like he's pretty excited for that, but he didn't know who made it. You wouldn't happen to know, would you? What brewery it's from? Says, uh, I don't know. Local brewery, it must be. Huh. All right. I suppose. I don't think I'm ready for something that strong the way he made it out to be, though. So, uh, I'll have another glass of Four Roses, if you wouldn't mind. She'll retrieve that for you. Um, across the bar, uh, of course, 
King, you I think see my work this, here is done already. <laughs> you see this odd incident of a man that's chatting with him get this bright red drink. This drink stands out from what everybody else is drinking here. So when you see that, you're like, what kind of conversation? Is he drinking carbonated paint? That looks like paint. I am all about the paranormal, especially I believe I even have. No, I didn't. I know Verde has some uh, cult knowledge from Hills. I don't. Ah, oh, God, was that Bjorn? I'm confusing my characters now. I'm so sorry. I think so. Bjorn was, yeah. I'm confusing my characters. R.I.P. Bjorn. Um. Uh. Okay. I. Hmm. I'm hunting aliens and shit. I know this town's fucked up and corrupt as fuck. So anything paranormal or out of the ordinary, I'm like honed into. So I'm gonna zone in on this drink. Mark this guy as a potential target. And uh, I just wanna kinda keep observing Keeping an eye on them, but also watching the bar, kind of hanging out, talking with my friend. Do we have a f name for my friend yet? Yeah, what's his name? Dax. Dax, okay, yeah. D -A -X. Like Dax Shepard, actor. N sure, I don't know who that is. Wait, who? He's a who funny guy. Dax Shepard. Oh, funny guy? Uh, I was thinking of the guy in uh, the main the main actor of Sons of Anarchy. He's in Without a Paddle. He's in mm -hmm. um, Idiocracy as the lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's like, go away, I'm baiting. Mm hmm uh, yeah. Well, Anyways, uh, Dak Shepard's a great name. So let's, it is um, a great name, actually. It's a That's... great name. Uh, I'm absolutely fine with that. You can be Dak Shepard. I call him Dax. I probably don't even know his last name, but his last yeah. name should be Shepard. He looks like a Dax Shepard for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I know him as Dax. So, anyways, I'm communicating with Dax. I'm keeping an eye on everything around me. I know I'm not alert, so I'm like, uh, but I'm trying. <laughs> um. I just want to rebuild my whole character. Uh, and Roll your notice skill. Yeah, maybe I just need to up my notice, man. I want to do that. Uh, do, 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 Where is it? Notice. Rolling. Got a seven. I'll take the seven. Yeah, you're really trying to keep track of everything um, and be aware, but there's a lot of distractions around. And uh, if I can, friend... if I can get a moment with him alone, I would love to ask him questions. If he goes to the bathroom or something, I will. Follow. Yeah, no, he seems glued to uh to, to Verde here. Um but you you were broken in your focus for a moment when um your beers finally arrive. Dax says to you, You're going to love this. And when you look down, you see two glasses of this primary red drink. <laughs> I'm gonna try and catch uh, do I see his drink? Yes, yeah. Well, you're alert, gonna... so you, you automatically pick up that they're the only other ones with this. The hell is this, Dex? I'm gonna try and catch Travis's eye. Just, like, subtly. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, oh, shoot, what would that be for skills? Uh... <laughs> A wink check. A <laughs> wink check? <laughs> Let's go with, uh, do a spirit roll. Ooh. Um, and then we'll get into what's going it's, on. It's here. one of those, I feel someone watching me. <laughs> yeah, your raw willpower of just uh, look at me. Spirit. All just of a sudden, across. Verde has telepathy. Damn! <laughs> um, yeah, so how this goes is, is you, you say, uh, you said something like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is this, Dex? Um... And as you look up from this and look across the bar, you're preparing to look at Dax. You, your eye is caught by um, Detective Verde looking at you and looking at your drink. And uh, Dax suddenly shake my head. <laughs> Dax says to you, well, uh, my contact says that uh, this is an absolutely delicious microbrew. It's being <laughs> brewed locally. Uh, they said you have to try it. So I thought, hey, man. I'll pay you back for the favor you did for me by introducing you to a local microbrew at an awesome little bar. Okay, it's a, kind of a shitty little bar, but, I mean, we're not in the big city. 
We're just here in Golden Ridge. I actually that. prefer small bars. Well, then. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad yeah, spot, I... honestly. Fre Frederick's just subtly shaking his head, hoping you see it as he's looking at the drink. And between you and the drink, don't do so it. So part of me is like, yeah, he knows paranormal shit because we've been through some stuff. So I trust that. But also he's a cop and I want to just... <laughs> Fuck you, cops! <laughs> um, hmm. But like, have you had this drink before? No, uh, I just heard it was amazing. Um, I thought I'd try it first time as you, man. Cheers. He moves to cheers with you. I haven't even picked it up. I'm just. I don't trust new things. You know that. Well. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Uh, to be fair, flawed my logic. I thought uh, thought wrong. Uh, you know what? I'll try it first. Tell you how good it is or awful. Knock <laughs> yourself out. I'm just kind of keeping my eyes out. He's he probably from our experiences down. together. I'm guessing we probably dealt together like maybe three, maybe four times. Enough to where we're on a I'll take you out to the bar kind of basis. Yeah, um, yeah. You guys are sort of budding friends. Yeah, more than likely I've bought two guns from him now, so it's probably at different times so that's at least two purchases and then probably two more and just picking up extra ammo and stuff um maybe like a site or something you know um yeah but uh we've been working together enough to where he probably knows that i'm always kind of on edge uh you know what looking over my shoulder um I don't like changing things up or like last minute changes or anything like that. So if we have a deal to like meet somewhere, I set the meeting like, you know, we meet where I've already scoped the place out and kind of, you know, da, 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 da. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So if he changed it up and was like, Oh no, I can't make it there. Let's meet over here. I'd be like, no, fuck no. I'll see you. You know, you'll hear from me again when I'm ready. <laughs> like, um, so we're at that point. So now if he surprised me with this new weird drink, I'm just like, no, <laughs> Yeah, and he takes a like a several big swigs and goes, oh, woo, oh, that's spicy, surprisingly spicy. It's got like a cinnamon mango aftertaste. That uh, that sounds worse than it actually is. That's not bad at all. Reminds me of like a Bloody Mary. Yeah, I kind of like a Bloody Mary. I don't um, like Bloody Marys. Feels like a beer. Who told you to get that drink? Uh, just one of my contacts said uh, he had a friend that uh, came through and had a beer at this bar that was a special that you have to request. Trust that person. What's that? Do you trust that person? Um, I would say so. Bet your life on it? No. <laughs> mm. Doesn't even hesitate. No. I just thought a beer that they suggested uh, would be good. It's really got a taste that sticks to your mouth. I gotta piss. I'm gonna get up. I wanna kind of scope the joint. I wanna see uh, access points. Um, you know, if there's any threats, like if I, in this back room, there's just like a gang of people hanging out, waiting to come out here or something. You know, I wanna kind of get eyes on yeah, you can mingle around, um, yeah. get a lay of the land. Um, yeah, you don't need to roll notice for this. I know your notice skill. Um, and uh, I should say, a, a little note, is sometimes I use your skills as what they are gets your results. Sometimes I have you roll for that when it's like a, a spur of the moment thing. But uh, in general, if there's no like time constraint or threat that's actively there, it's based on what your die is of what result you'll get. And if you have alertness, of course, you get a lot of extras. But... Um, yeah, so you, you're you able to wander around and uh, get a lay of land. Everything is going rather commercially here. Um, it seems busy. There's a lot of people playing pool. That seems popular here for some reason. A lot of tables. There are people playing darts. There's lots of people drinking beer. But you don't see anybody else really drinking this weird beer. Except for your friend who special ordered it and uh, Verde's best friend who special ordered it. Bathrooms um, are clear. Yeah, you Check can go off. to the bathroom easily. Um, uh, Verde, you, you saw 
uh, King get up? Did you want to join him, uh, evade your glue-like friend? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, presuming maybe you guys uh, meet up like over here uh, in the dark hallway? Yeah, he probably no. sees me like checking bathrooms. <laughs> Come out, and I'm yeah. like, what brings you to this fine establishment? Not really that drink a, you're about to drink? Not really a cop bar. The drink? You, uh, you a fan? We've, no, we've got, shit, I shouldn't be telling you this, but you know how it goes. Um. I just got one of them faces. I wink. Yeah, sure, let's <laughs> go with that. Um. People tend to just tell me things. <laughs> so, that stuff, as far as I can tell, is illegal. Nobody can tell me where it's coming from. And then... One of the batches of those drinks is called the Big Boy or something. And uh, my friend over there was telling me that uh, it's out of this world. It'll take you to a different dimension. That sort of stuff. Fuck. If um, you get my meaning. Pickles. It's perfectly fine if this is just a zero no. But um, during the, you said it's been three months ish. Yeah, we'll go with, like, uh, two or three months. Okay. I think it's probably closer to two months. During that time, um, you know, I've been a paranormal hunter in training, really. Um, have I encountered any sort of paranormal stuff, or have I mainly been hunting down criminal elements during that time? For both of you, everything has been quiet on the fronts that you've experienced weird things. There has been no mime subtitle talk. There has been no mime sightings. Um, there have been no monster sightings, terrors, or goblins, if you will. Um, you haven't had any unnatural phenomena. A anything that's happened that's weird has been explainable. Okay. Um, yeah. But that said, there are always kind of odd things, like your keys aren't quite where you thought you left them. So I might be completely off and wrong, but, you know... This town, danger. The alarm bells started ringing. Verde is alert, also a cop. Does he have any idea what I do now? Either that say, being straight up just him keeping tabs on me, or in the police department, they've heard of someone called the Kingsman or something who's hunting down criminals, like vigilante type. If it's hunting down criminals, we probably definitely would have heard about it. I don't know if we would have a name, though. True. Yeah, I'm going to say with bad luck is mm -hmm. there's no way you've assumed that this guy killing off criminals is your friend. Right. That makes sense. And, and the yeah, department probably doesn't know yet. Either. Travis King wasn't that kind of a guy, you know, yeah. before, so... Okay, so maybe they've heard of there's a vigilante in the city or in this town, but he there's no ties to me. Right yeah. now, okay. Um, in that case, I'll look to. Uh, we'll, we're probably just like standing in the hallway, like leaning against the wall or something, like nonchalant. Yeah. Not looking at each other, just looking straight ahead or something. I'm just like, huh. Well, yeah, you're right. This town's definitely off its fucking axis, and uh, if there, if there's any even, if their description of this drink is it takes you to another dimension, I mean that's red flags all over the place. Well, yeah, I yeah. I don't know about you. I haven't seen anything in the last couple of months. I think everything's kind of gone quiet. Hold it's up. It's been Hold up. strange. You fuck me. Verde, you're aware that uh, your friend has made his way over and has just now joined you two in the hall. Can I help you? Oh, just I just wanted to see what you guys are up to. Uh, busy day here. <laughs> Line to the bathroom. Is, is he in uh yeah. So Bathroom's Verde locked. here wanna... was telling me he's oh. telling me about uh what what he's doing tonight, and it sounded like he had a productive night. How about you, uh, guy? I kind of pull my hat down. I'm like <laughs> acting the most suspicious you possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at this. <laughs> I never said I was good at this. I said I'm trying. Uh, hold on, just a second. Um. Yeah. So he came over. Um. Uh, he asked what I'm doing tonight. Uh, should we like uh just 
trying to use the bathroom in. Big line sometimes it gets real busy here, he says. Yeah. Especially when you drink a lot of beer. Yeah, someone's in there, door's locked. I'm saying it's a push door and I'm like pulling on it. I'm like, oh, door's locked. Say, have you tried the big boy special, friend? Listen, man, no disrespect. I'm not your friend. Oh, well, that's okay. You can still be my friend. It's something to die for. Absolutely delicious. One of the best beers I've ever had. I'm gonna iver at that. Like, <laughs> sounds great, bud. <laughs> no, it's not out. just great, though. It's fantastic. It's out of this world. It, he stops mid-sentence and stares at your arm. It's the arm you have your sigil on. Your sigil isn't showing. I'm going to raise my shirt, showing off my concealed 1911 pistol tucked in my belt. I'm like, man, I'm not your friend. I'm just trying to use the bathroom. Yeah, just trying to use the bath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, same here. I'm, I'm gonna go outside and use the bathroom. That's a good he idea. He makes his exit from the group, backing away and then turning to go outside the building. Re conceal. <laughs> I want to hang on. So, I've probably had drinks since the last couple months. Does my rune affect my alcohol consumption? Uh, it doesn't seem to. No, okay, I was going to say, maybe I can drink this drink safely and be able to test it for us and get some information because of my rune, but... Um, I guess I mean, if I you try can, and drown you... myself in it... <laughs> yeah, you, you've never been able to drown yourself in beer, but it doesn't, like, make it so you don't get hung over. Okay. Yeah, I probably um, tested that at one point. I'm like, god damn And it, it doesn't <laughs> seem to, like, improve how many alcohol drinks you can drink before going, it's like, blackout the worst or superpower. <laughs> I can just not drown... How often am I just throwing myself into the middle of the ocean except that one time where I come down? <laughs> <laughs> it was one it did time, happen. Dad. It did happen, but the one time. Um, okay, I'm gonna... God, I'm like Hancock. Except he actually had powers, but I'm like the most depressed. Like, I got superpowers. Like Aquaman. Yeah, I'm like... Not, no, not even Aquaman. I'm like, what's that dude from uh, Spongebob? Barnacle Boy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they're superpowers that they can breathe underwater. So can every other fucking character. Good job. <laughs> well, technically, like Aquaman, they could control fish, so Yeah. Yeah, you don't have control fish. Mermaid Man, that's the other one. But yeah, I'm basically Barnacle Boy. Like I'm just like I got the superpower to make it to where if I ever fall asleep in the ocean I won't die from that. Like <laughs> yay. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> it also works if somebody's starting trying to strangle you. Like if you get like the Golden Ridge Strangler, he's just holding you down, mm -hmm. being like, "Why won't you die? Why won't you die?" And you're like, "I'm trying, dude. I'm really trying. I've been trying. I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to die here." I wonder if I'm that depressed. I'm like, "Yo, I, I got given superpowers, and this is what I got. Please kill me. Like, please strangle me." <laughs> I know what to tell you, dude. I'm trying um, to die. I'll re reconceal my my carry, and I'll be like, "We might have a problem." We being us, Verde, I'm talking to you, not the bathroom door. <laughs> Never mind. The I'm gonna, I walk into the bathroom. <laughs> Verde, do I you want to... Yeah, go for it. Just go ahead. Uh, you follow him into the bathroom? Yeah, I was going to follow. Okay. Yeah, so you both go into the bathroom. I'm peeing. <laughs> Looking at him. <laughs> What? I'm waiting on you. By all means, I'll stand at the side. <laughs> Would you guys like to get the dual stream achievement? <laughs> yes. We're both being. I was, I'll still carry on conversation. I'm like, your friend's a problem. Yeah, I know. Uh, you want to explain what the whole uh, flash in the gun thing was? Because he seemed awfully curious about something on your arm. The rune from the uh, Cabin in the Woods trip. I'll mitts the pee. I'll <laughs> hold out my arm. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that'll... Mm, that might be a problem, yeah. i be honest. I've tried to investigate this rune a little bit over the last couple months. I don't know anything, but that guy seemed really interested. He seemed... Okay. 
Andy's right. drinking your drink, saying that it's yep. taking to another planet to die for. It's more than great. It's more than good. Yeah, it's I great. was about to go. Yeah, I'm gonna finish up and go chase him down. <laughs> Finishes up, zips up, and walks back out towards <laughs> towards the outside, trying to find dude. I'll zip him up. I'll zip me up. Zip. <laughs> just gotta finish up, bro. It's like a it's like a handshake, but instead we just zip each other. <laughs> I'm like, all right, break. <laughs> We don't like each other, but we help each other out here. Weirdly. Listen, when a man asks you for help, you get you help him. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> it's like when your hands are too cold and you can't undo your own zipper. <laughs> but it's reverse. I don't know. Anyway, we're. I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna go find that guy outside. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we're both hunting, dude. I was like, Verde, you might want to join because uh, this probably won't end well. Yeah, if you're both going, you can find him standing outside, um, looking at the street as if he's waiting for a taxi or an Uber. Um, if given the chance, I want to walk up and put my arm around him and kind of, in a way, usher him behind the building, like, oh, out of the main room. Yeah, out of sight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he immediately puts his arm around uh, your back as well as if you're both like you're they have the upper arm he has the lower arm and uh you can take him around back if you like yes um we'll say this is an alleyway it's weird i don't know the fact that he's okay with this makes me think he's got something up his sleeve now and i'm like whoa <laughs> am i yeah, the one so you bring trapped? this weird you bring this weird old man into an alleyway mm -hmm. and he says a uh, change of heart you both looking to what are you looking for actually in this alleyway I'm going to release him, and I'll be like, I usually have a way. tap on the back. I, hmm, I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> I usually have a way of handling this, Verde, but usually it's not with uh, witnesses here. So if you're here, maybe you want to lead this one? Sure. It might be a little bit more, uh, you know. By the books. Legal. That as well. Actually, can we wreck on that? I don't know that I, because I don't want to give away that I'm a criminal and like doing bad stuff, like or not doing well, bad stuff. But. No, this is, com from my opinion, this is completely in character for you. Is because technically you wouldn't be questioning people. Yeah, and I'm I, I just my guy was chaotic and like crazy, but he was a bail bonds agent. Like he's not like yeah. a hit me and murder criminals and stuff. So probably what I'd be like is I'd release him and be like, hey, you've got more experience with this than I do. Like kind of playing it off. I'm yeah, like, yeah. You want to take this one? Sure. I'll be kind of guarding the alley, kind of not guarding, but putting myself between him and the exit. All right, my friend, I've got some questions for you, if you wouldn't mind answering them. I feel fantastic right now. I'd love to answer questions. Cool. Um, do you know anything about that rune on my friend's arm over there? Uh, well... Okay, you see, I didn't think you'd be able to see it too, but the big boy special, it lets you see things that are funny about people, and, uh, well, your friend, he's got a scribble on his arm, I saw. Bad ta yeah. tattoo, huh? Yeah, it's pretty nice. You got um, something against my tattoo? I don't know, I just didn't know they had glow-in-the-dark tattoos, but... With the big boy special, it sometimes brings you to places you don't think you'd be. You can see so, things about people. I did so. Didn't not think not it was many real. people can see stuff that the big boy special lets you see. Well, everybody has a different experience. I like to think that the big boy special it uh it opens your mind to what you really think about people and lets you lets you help uh, figure out their vibes and their energy and. And let you know if you'll you'll mesh with them. And I saw by the scribbles on uh, <laughs> your friend's arms and uh, the thing he keeps in his pants that um, I don't think we'd be good <laughs> friends. No offense, dude, but uh, you just gave him bad vibes. And uh, when I'm drinking on the uh, big boy special, I, I just don't want to cause problems. I just thought maybe you'd be friendly, but then your your actions said no. All right, cool. So um, what what spooked you when you saw the little squib scribble? Because uh, normally when you see somebody's tattoo, you don't go run it and take off immediately. You know, you just uh, decided that, oh, this guy's got tattoos. I don't like tattoos. And he's going to book it. Well, yeah. We're all well, entitled to our own opinion. That's perfectly fine. 
no, no, but it was the tattoos, but also the gun. <laughs> I'm like, Fred just kind of. A really? guy with a weird tattoo pulled a gun out of well, his shirt out of his gun and then showed me the gun. And I thought, ah, not today. Craig, you're not going to die tonight. I said to myself, and I made my way out here. And then I thought, maybe you guys are maybe friendly. All right, cool. Um, so. Would you uh would you be able to tell me where where the uh does the big boy special get served anywhere else or something? while he's talking to him, can I pull out the guy's wallet? Uh I think that would be a thievery roll. Do you have thievery? Mm-mm. It'd be thievery, uh so uh D four minus two if you'd like to try picking his pocket. Or untrained would be the proper term. D4 minus 2? Mm-hmm. Um, your D6 will also be a minus 2, but you do get your wild die. Okay, I don't know how to do this, so I gotta roll them separate. Nope, that's plus 2, so that would have been a 2. <laughs> I did that wrong, I'm sorry. Okay, um, that would have exploded, One. though. Um, so roll a, your, um, roll a D4 plus 2. Minus two. Uh, and, no, because it, it. Um. Oh wait. Oh, um, I see. So it's a four, which would have exploded, but it gets minus down to two, right? Yeah. So the two, and then so you the... explode, so you add another d four to your two. Okay. Yeah, that's how. So I was one like, Jesus, how did I get that four math? plus two, and that should be the total. And thus the does the um exploding die get a minus two? Um. I don't believe so. That's the um, overall the, the roll. Dice okay. Just normally. So then, it's total total of four with the explosion. So I got really lucky there. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, shoot, what were we even talking? Why did I make you roll? Uh, taking the guy's wallet out. Maybe that's right. He probably still noticed. I'm not like. I mean, unless maybe I can roll stealth. No, no, no. A four works. Um, you you you're able to uh, as he's talking. He's got a distraction. You're able to uh to pull his wallet. Um, and, uh, are you looking, like, at his license or ID? Is I'm going go for? I'm taking his license. I'll pull his license out, pocket it, give him back his wallet. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah I'll, there's... I'll let him know. I'll be like, okay, Craig, I, I, I respect your, uh, you know, commitment to saving your own life. I, I'm glad that you weren't judging me on my tattoos. Um, you seem like a stand-up guy. Uh, I'm just going to hang on to this just in case we have any problems in the future. Uh, oh wait! You I, want him to know you, you did that? Yeah, that's why I'm just giving him back his wallet. I took him, took his ID and gave him back his wallet, and I'll be like, "Okay," because with that four, you could have done that without him knowing. Yeah, I just. But you, but you want to like take it and then publicly the, let him know you're giving it back. The idea of having his idea is so that if anything happens, I know where he lives. Oh right, right, right. Okay. And so, so it's like, I don't it's think like an intimidation. He, yeah, I don't think it would have the same effect if I put it back and then he just gets home and he's like, "Oh, I lost my ID. I'm still gonna go do something." <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I saying? wanted to make sure that's what you were. Yeah. You were doing. So I'll give it back um, and I'll be like, "I'm just gonna hang on to this just in case we have problems in the future. I can visit you at home and we can talk about it." Yeah, you could visit me. You can come <laughs> hang out with me. Actually, not we could go bar hopping together. I. I know a lot of good bars, my friend. I don't know if I want to, but I have intimidation trained. Can I roll it and see? You can go ahead and roll it. This guy doesn't seem intimidated. He's also drunk as fuck on whatever this thing is, so. It's a four? Yeah, you give him a look and he says, uh, maybe maybe not hang out. Uh, um, anything else you need, friend Verde? Uh, no. If uh, you don't know any anywhere any of this other stuff is served, then I think we're done here. I appreciate you answering the questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really hard to figure out where it's served because only Roger knows, and so. Um, well, who's Roger? To... Huh? Who's Roger? Oh, he's a guy with um, uh, with uh, really in style glasses. That uh, I guess he's like the guy who brings it to the bars, and if you catch him. Um, he's got a, like a bolo tie usually. They're not very popular around here, as you guys probably. Know. I'm gonna <laughs> head off. Guys oh, sorry, oh. I was trying to catch you when you bro- took a break. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt. That's fine. You want to head off? Yeah, I'm gonna head back inside. I'm gonna motion to Verde to be like a 
text me the details kind of thing. Um, is he's getting information, but based off what I'm hearing about this drink and what it does, I want to go check on Dex. <laughs> um, I'll leave them to do their thing. I just want to note when I walk by, I want to look at this ID. I want to note the address so that I have it, but I want to put the ID under um, Verde's Four Roses drink. I'm giving the ID back to the cops because I'm a good guy. Gotcha. So that way, when he comes back in, I can maybe even write down on a napkin and be like, found this lost ID, figured I'd turn it into the cops. <laughs> I'll put the ID with it. And then uh, I'll head back to my seat. Yeah. Uh, we'll Craig call. Hall is the full name. Full name. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, Detective Verde, is there anything else? Do you want to say to him uh, any he was talking about Roger and he said yeah he's got a bullet tie and uh, cool glasses uh, you know where I could find him well no 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 um, he's just he's usually at the bars when it's being sold but I, I haven't seen him tonight you'd have to you have to be lucky to find Roger every time I find him I ask where are you going next where are you selling next because it always runs out Heard is um, unlucky I'm just trying to find that beer, you know? Big boy beer. Some of the best I've ever had. It makes normal beer not taste so good. All right. Uh, I appreciate it. You have a uh, wonderful rest of the night. Um, yeah, thank you for your conversation and your information. And thank you, too, Verde. It's always nice to be around other people. <laughs> he kind of turns and makes his way. You have a safe night. Oh, I will. I, I will, he says, without turning back to you. I hey, he watch out say... for mimes. You hear him chuckle, but he keeps on walking away. <laughs> I was waiting to see if there was a reaction to that. <laughs> and that's that's why I said it. I'm like, is he going to have a reaction to that? I was waiting to see if he was like, it's always nice to be around the law or like police or something. And I was like, oh, he knows! <laughs> What do you do, Detective Verde? I guess I'm going back in and drink. All right. Uh, you head back in. But first, uh, King, you make it to uh, Dax, mm -hmm. who is enjoying his beverage. Um, and he turns to you and says, oh, you're back. Yeah. Had some uh, business, but it's attended to. Uh, How yeah. are you? Safe? Yeah. Oh, I feel great. I feel fantastic. Feel alive. You never told me you had a tattoo. There's a lot of things I don't tell you, Dex. We're not. <laughs> We're in a line. How did you get it to glow through your clothes? Is it covered <laughs> this whole time? That makes yeah. it so much weirder. <laughs> I was thinking it was just out on display. I'm like. I think that drink is making me see things, Dex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Maybe they got something funny in here. Yeah, strong fucking drink. Uh, you want to drink yours? Negative. Uh, no, I'm good. I need to keep my uh, what's about me. You know how it is. Okay, well, I'm not going to turn this down. I'm going double dose here. He takes your drink. Um, I figure at this point, Dax probably deals with a lot of bullshit people. It's probably even the point where, like, he's been, like, taken advantage of by other criminals, and I've come in and, like, put them down and stopped them. Maybe that's, like, the favor I did for him. Yeah. Um, and so, while I am a mercenary, a hitman, and a gun for hire, I think is the right term here, um, and he knows that. He also knows that I have like a code that I kind of live by because I'm not, I'm not a dick like all the other criminals and like the guys he deals with. I'm actually like somewhat decent. Like I still don't, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to be your savior, but I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to shoot you in the face. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm decent at least at some point. So I am going to stick around because he's about to get fucked up on whatever this shit is. I want to make sure he at least gets back to where he needs to go safe and sound. Um, so I'll let him drink and I'll hang out. 
until he's done and kind of make sure he gets home. Yeah. Um, and Verde, you're getting more drinks just hanging out there by yourself? Yeah, I'm going to see if uh, Rob or... Yeah, Rob shows up. Rob? Roger. That's Roger, yeah. Oh, Roger, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I knew it started with an R. I was like, what did I write down? Roger. Um, so you don't really pick up much over there, Verde. You're keeping an eye out, but... Um, what happens over the next hour or so as you guys are hanging out and uh, witnessing things is um, Dax mentions, he's like, oh, I gotta thank Mr. Potts for this. I, th this this alcohol is phenomenal. I've never felt anything like this before. <laughs> and I've done shrooms. I've done DMT. I have done weed. Nothing is as good as this. I'm kind of ignoring what he's saying because I know he's drunk. And then I'm like, thank who? What are you talking about, Dex? Huh? Oh, uh, it's the my friend's contact. Yeah. The I guess is Mr. Potts or something. Oh uh, right, yeah. Two I, teams. I probably I probably got from my days as a bail bonds agent. I probably got one of them like little pocket handbooks that I'm like really familiar yeah. with. I used to do this all the time, and so I'll pull that out and be like, Mr. God, I I'm so sorry. I already forgot what was. It. <laughs> he said Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. And then <laughs> there's probably a point later where he says Mr. Two T's. So it's Potts with two T's. Yeah, I know Pepper Potts, but I don't know Mr. Potts. That must be Iron Man. Yeah. No, he's <laughs> Mr. Stark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Like, I, you said you know him from where? He's a work friend. Huh? Oh, no, my, my contact knows him as the one who introduced the bar to the drink. The bar. Hmm. Mr. Potts, you got a first name? Is that Roger? He pauses. And we, he's might, like, ah. we might know the same guy. Why don't you roll your persuasion for me? Yeah, uh, we'll do. I believe you get a free reroll if you fail. I'm trying to play it off like we're both friends of this person, so we can talk, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and roll it. What? What did you say? What, what about my roll? Um, you have charismatic, so you can reroll if you fail. Okay. Well, I got a sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> I need a four hire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's willing to share this information. Um, while wildly intoxicated, he says, Potts, uh, two T's, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers Potts. He is the guy my friend knew. The knows. The, the, he knew him. He, he knew them, and then he knows them. He increasingly gets... Uh, bad like details coming back to you due to so he's both drunk and high off of sounds like sugar. And so yep. I'm trying to understand. So it's not Roger Potts. Roger Potts. Oh, it was seems okay. like the proper Sorry. name. I missed it. Okay, Mister Rogers Potts. And you can probably cut off the ass there because he's slurring. Great. Okay, got it. Um. All right, I'm gonna write that down on a piece of paper. Um, I'll be like. You ready to uh, get on home? Yeah, probably a good idea. It's uh, gosh, it's getting late here. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have him kind of help him up to his feet. Can probably, yeah, probably. I need to keep my hands kind of free, so probably by my left hand, I kind of got him by the scruff of the neck, just making sure that he stays standing and let him walk, but just kind of walk with him. My piece of paper with Roger Potts written on it, uh, kind of circled. I'm gonna uh, rip that. Fold it and uh, tuck it in um, Verde's pocket as I go by. If I remember right, part Verde wears a trench coat. I do. I would like to roll. Oh, God, I'm gonna fail. I need to get better at this. Can I? Is it thievery again to reverse pickpocket? If you don't want him to know, then yes. If you don't care if he knows, then you can just do it. I'm gonna try. He'll probably notice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thievery. Or minus two this time. I got a minus one. <laughs> uh, Detective Verde, a man that is very clearly Travis. Or, uh, shit, fuck. Uh, Kingsman, <laughs> Kingsman, King, Kingsman King. The artist uh, formerly known as Travis. <laughs> yeah, uh, slip, uh, put something into your coat pocket as he's passing by. I'll head um, out you can bar. pull it out and see Roger Potts. Circled. 
sir. Um, not gonna and, react to it. And yeah, you get you are able to see uh, after your comrade leaves, detective. You're able to see that this uh, Roger Potts, as we're going to call him, doesn't seem to be a person who's here. You don't see that many people wearing glasses, and you don't see anybody wearing a bolo tie here. Um, in fact, you don't really see anybody wearing ties at what all. What is a bolo tie? It's, I thought um, it was a bow tie. What's a bolo tie? A bolo tie, it's like uh, uh, traditionally with, um, I want to say, like Texan businessmen. Um, let me get a picture. I don't know how to describe it. It's like not <laughs> a bow tie. but Breath, if you're editing this, bolo tie on screen. <laughs> um, the moment I share it with you, you're going to be like, oh, one of those fuckers. Fuckers. Uh, uh, the the one of these kind of things. Oh, that is yeah, Texas businessman for sure. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like you know what you've seen it before, but bolo tie is like a phrase that I don't, not necessarily, but knows. Um, I just know there's an episode of South Park where his grandpa, uh, Stan's grandpa, gets him a bolo tie, and he's like, "This is really." gonna make people bully me and then people do but he's forced to by his parents um great episode but um yeah you don't see anybody in this town wearing that and it would be very out of fashion in this town to wear that um and now a word but... from our sponsors south bar no <laughs> no now from a word from our sponsors hi i'm mr pickles and i sell every bolo tie in town if you want a bolo tie in the pacific northwest I'm Mr. Pickles, and you know, I'm selling them. The only thing that would make that better is if Craig Hall was a bolo tie salesman, and you'd be like, I'm <laughs> Craig Hall. <laughs> I've got a haul of bolo ties. It's like bolo a... ties for days. <laughs> and then you got the wacky, incredible wig man. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, a wacky, car commercial. Wacky, inflatable, arms flailing tube man. Yeah, it's a, it's a car commercial, but for bolo ties. <laughs> New and used bolo ties. <laughs> yeah. And new and used bolo ties. Do you want to take one out for a drive just to test it out? We have those that you can use. Anyways. <laughs> um, God, if I was like an animator, I would animate that little commercial and insert it. And like <laughs> So many things. Like, if anyone out there is an animator and likes to work for Snickers... Hit me up. <laughs> I don't have money. And I'm all broke as fuck. Our stream currently, our, our production, our video, our, our community currently makes like negative five hundred dollars a fucking season. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. The budget went out of control for Strange Town with Golden Ridge. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this would be a good time to take a, a short break. Yeah, we can. I made this uh, stream like. 30 seconds before we started? <laughs> it was my uh, bad, all right. Thankfully, I this if you guys can't tell, this is the production from King's Crossing. <laughs> Brought over to Strange Town Glow Ridge. Um, we're high tech over here. Um, we are gonna go on a quick BRB. Uh how long y'all need? Because we've still nice. Oh no, I was gonna say we have uh, under the table, but we don't. Under the table is tomorrow. So yep. we still have an hour left. Um okay, how about we go to the 15 minute mark? That sounds good to me. So we've got maybe give or take seven minutes uh, if you're watching this live. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you won't see any of this because I'll edit it out. Uh, I will see you guys in a minute. Seven. Seven minutes.
and we are back uh hopefully everybody enjoyed that little break i know it took us a couple extra minutes uh basically i was telling stories over here um but we're back we're gonna be heading into the final half hour ish plus of uh episode one chapter three strange shot golden age or do you pickles yes so you have some clues it is about like i don't know it's probably 1 a.m at this point in the game or it's getting late at, at least um yeah. you have a name roger potts the person who is distributing this illegal alcohol that you're looking into this case of peculiar alcohol if you will but how peculiar we do not actually know because since you guys haven't consumed any of it i haven't consumed it either um but you have a name. Do you want to continue into this night, or do you want to sleep to the next day and prepare to try and find this guy? I'm forward? dropping Dax off at wherever Dax wants to go, and then yeah, I'm yeah. going home. Um, more than likely, I feel like my character's developed some sort of paranoia, so I'm going to do, like, a backtrack, roundabout, second loop back to my home to make sure I'm not being followed by anything, and then going home. Yeah, um, before we get to what Verde does, there is something that stands out to you. As we mentioned in uh, Adventure 1, your apartment that you live in is a newer apartment complex built next to an older one. You okay. live in the newer one. And uh, yeah, you know that there's some sort of like streamer or YouTuber or whatever that lives in there. And when you come back, it, it's just this time his camera means maybe a little bit more to you. Um, and you probably make your way trying to avoid being in his view, but you do like pick up o like overhearing with your notice of D six. You overhear him loudly talking about what is on his video and saying, "Just crazy! I don't think that any other town is as messed up and haunted as this town." Pause. The strange <laughs> town of Golden Ridge. I... He's just shouting. Name drop. Uh, I would like to use my new updated agility to scale the building. I don't know if there's a fire escape or whatever. I want to, I want to get eyes on whatever he's doing. Well, he's like, uh, so there's two buildings and there's, uh, two parking lots in between. Mm -hmm. And he's sort of like in the grass on the side of one of the parking lot areas. Oh, he's and outside. Okay. Yeah, so he, he you, you can see he's on, like, ground floor. You could walk up, like, a stairwell to get to another level, um, since there's exterior. Um, yeah, exterior would I be able to see? Is he watching a video or something? No, no, no. He's, like, there. there's a guy filming the video, and he's ranting at oh, the video. You can okay. see they're making active production. And that's why it makes you feel a little more uncomfortable, is there's a camera. It's sort of yeah, pointed in I your see, direction towards him. And yeah, towards so this you. guy this guy actually has production money well he's got uh, at least a friend who has a decent looking camera and he's doing this rant about haunted stuff in golden ridge you're like coming up and you're sort of the same angle so you make sure you're like out of the camera view because you yeah. don't you probably don't want to be on the youtube video no i'll stay yeah. out of out of view uh i'd like to hang around and kind of see if he's saying anything worthwhile uh well what he's talking about it it just he's ranting uh, like I keep seeing weird things and I I don't know what to say like you believe me right Zach you believe me oh come on yeah of course you Zach. believe me the, the other guys the, the cameraman's not yelling oh I thought he was talking to like his one viewer like how I talked to Tiger <laughs> no, no, the, the cameraman kind of like shrugs but doesn't say anything that you can hear from the set that, like, if i remember right we've dealt with pardon me for not remembering names we dealt with someone else who was seeing strange stuff in the caves and stuff their name they're the student who could hear uh, the things in the cave but no one else could what's his name i um, recruited him for a while and then he just fucking ditched us when we went on the vacation. college kid yeah yeah he didn't want to go in the tunnel because he said, I don't go in tunnels. Um, but I, he, I, he, hear, he was able to hear what they were saying in the tunnels, but he wouldn't yes. go in. Um, Anyways, his name isn't important, but what I'm thinking about is maybe this guy can see things and cameraman can't. Um...
I they look like they're in their twenties, by the way, like was, early twenties. I was gonna say I could go up and talk to him, but I think what I'll do is. Is there any way, does he do like a sign off or something at the end? Hey, subscribe to my channel at this or something to give me what his tag is. Uh, I don't yeah, want to go yeah. up and talk to him because then I'll interview me on camera and I have to deal with people and that's witnesses and stuff. Um, I would rather, if I can, just, be, I mean, knowing this as being a streamer, a lot of what you do is recorded on camera. So you could just go back to the footage and be like, okay, what has he been talking about that he's been seeing? Yeah. Um, so you, you take a pause for a moment because that's, that's common knowledge. And it's the sort of common knowledge rule that anybody would have with the, the standard D4 that you're given. I have common um, knowledge smarts D4. Every, every YouTuber has their, their like sign off. That, that's just what people have. Um, so you wait for a few moments and he's ranting, but it kind of is like coming to a, okay. If I will find evidence, Zach and my community, everybody, the Melvinites will rise. We'll find truth where the truth is not found. It couldn't be bleaker, but it is with Melvin bleaker signing off. What? Uh, Isn't and that, Melvin Bleeker dead? Isn't that the guy we found in the sewer? Yes. And this guy's calling himself Melvin Bleeker? Apparently. Very loudly in the parking lot. Okay. Hang on. Does the camera get turned off and then like, okay, cut? Yeah. You can see them like he's not yelling anymore, so they're kind of talking towards themselves. I haven't seen them. Okay. I want to watch for a bit if they like, okay, we're done. The cameraman leaves and he walks back. I'm going to follow him. Melvin Bleeker. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the they they do indeed. They talk for a little bit. Um, oh, it takes a couple minutes. Um, Titan is like, are we going back in with. Mm -hmm. With the uh, bark, I'm gonna pat him on the head. Whining. I'm watching. Uh, it's a life, anyways. Um, you know, uh, Titan doesn't speak, but the YouTubers they they split ways. Um, the guy with the the video camera does get into a vehicle in the parking lot, parking lot of the old building. He drives off, and the uh, speaker, if you will, Do I have a YouTuber, mask or anything. After all this time doing what I do now? Mask? Yeah. If I'm hunting like a, down criminals and killing them vigilante style, do I have, like, a balaclava or something? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. You probably have something that you can cover up your face, mostly. Okay. I think I'll be pulling that out and equipping it. It, it would be simple. Um, That's perfect. You haven't hit the now. point where you're getting eloquent. No, like, I don't. I don't imagine I'm, like, full on, like, daredevil style or anything like that like ceramic I figured, mask no nah, yeah i figure it's probably just like a balaclava or some shit no. yeah so um, the guy's heading into this old apartment building i want to follow, wanna, follow. You wanna, yeah follow um what would it be to pick a window do a roll for that like if mm. i probably do, i lived here long enough i've remember seeing this guy before do i know what apartment room he would be in could i just go in through his window and meet him inside his apartment or should i follow him if you had alertness i'd probably say yeah you'd probably pick those kind of things up um but i might be, I might be getting a new edge <laughs> i need alertness um i investigator oh, investigator on. might be one that would also I know, but he that. has both of those, and I don't want our characters to be the same, so I gotta figure out my own niche. Um, but you you can certainly follow him, or um, I just call Verde over and be like, "Hey, I need you to <laughs> give me the deets on this YouTuber." <laughs> Do you want to roll your stealth to uh, like tail him? Yeah. Oh God, they're not good. Fuck, I suck. Um. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> can I use a Benny? Um, uh, yeah, you could certainly use a penny. No way I win this, right? Yes! Seven. Click the seven. Yeah. 
Um, so you follow him to, uh, he goes up the stairs uh, he, from the lobby. It, it's a simple complex. Uh, you go in through double doors, and then he goes up to some stairs immediately, and uh, you follow him up and see that he goes up another flight of stairs. So he goes up another flight of stairs, you follow him up, and then he goes up another flight of stairs. It's a lot of stairs in this, and you know the building only has four floors that are, like, actively... There's the ground floor and then three above. Mm -hmm. So once you get to the third floor there, you just feel that there's something odd about this place instinctively. And you're following him. Go ahead and roll your notice. Oh, God. Her to help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, not there. I got a five. Yeah. Uh, so he, you're not trying to stop him before he enters his room, correct? No, but as the door closes, I think I'll be entering. Okay. Um, with your stealth, I'll let that uh, be something you can do. Uh, but with your notice, um, everything is, uh, you, well, you pass 201, 203, 205, and then you get to 207, which is his room. And your notice roll is, that's not how you would number floors or rooms on the third floor. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> I was like, that's weird. I wasn't going to call yeah. you out on it, but now I see it's for a reason. <laughs> um, so at 2.07, um, you're able to, you, you just, he, he like uh, opens the door and then he's in his apartment and he's swinging it closed, but you want to move in behind him? Yeah. Do you want to make yourself known at this point, or are you still trying to be hidden? Um, I guess I'll stay hidden for the moment, if that's even possible. Um, go ahead and roll another stealth check. Okay. If if it's not possible, that's um, fine. With a minus two. Okay. Uh... Verde has a bad feeling in the pit of his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Roll. Uh, five. What? Yeah. That didn't work. Okay, it was a four up to a five minus two makes it a three. Um, Benny. Go ahead. I don't know if I need it, but. You're spinning the bennies. Yeah. Probably not a good idea, but roll. All right. <laughs> I got a zero. Um, as soon as I'm noticed, I want to pull. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead and roll your intimidation. All right. And then we'll move into this, and then we'll... Uh... God, three. I can't use my last benny. I have to save it to make sure my dog doesn't die. Um... I'll have Titan in here as well. I'm probably not intimidating. I'll probably pull, but I'm not aiming at him. I'm just holding it down to the ground, so it's not really intimidating. Can I talk? Yeah, you pull the gun, and your intimidation is that intro roll. Um, and we'll do this scene, and then we'll get to the Verde, of course. I'll probably, like, change um, my mind. I'll probably go to, like, intimidate, and I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, all right, listen. If we can... I don't have shit to steal in here. If we can, I would prefer us just talk. Can we just talk? I guess. You're the one pulling a gun. I was the one I'm going hol home. I'll holster it. But like, alright. I heard you outside talking about how this town's haunted. You're finding things. Can you run me through what you found? <laughs> well, everything in this town is fucked up what's your name melvin bleaker what do i know of melvin bleaker because i knew about melvin bleaker but i thought he was the dead guy so now i'm trying to figure out what what exactly did i know my notes were all on roll 20 so i don't have my notes yeah he was a professor um at the local community college in the psychology department but he taught the parapsychology classes in like the electives part of psychology yeah uh um, that's right 
and he had people who were helping him. Um, yeah. I think it was Aaron something. Aaron, yep, yep. Uh, that was helping him do explorations of the tunnels for the paranormal events yeah. that are happening. Aaron there. wouldn't enter. Bleaker didn't enter and died down there. Yeah, he, uh, he entered by himself. Um, so I'll ask this guy, but like, that's your birth name, Melvin Bleaker. Because Melvin Bleaker's dead in a tunnel. My, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. My family's small. I, I don't really know any other bleakers. I've never met another bleaker in my life. So there is a professor at a college near here named Melvin Bleaker, taught on paranormal psychology stuff. He was exploring the paranormal and the unknown here in this town, and he wound him up dead down in the sewer tunnels. Okay. And now your name's Melvin Bleeker, and you're exploring the paranormal in this town? I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to make videos that are actually fun. That, like, somebody would actually want to watch. Things that would brighten people's days. I'm not trying to d d have At this all point, this... I'll probably, like, sit up on his, like, kitchen counter and just talk to him. I'm like, okay, I commemorate you for that. I think the world needs more of that. What set you off that this town's haunted, then? This town, it, 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 just everywhere I go, bad things happen. Maybe you're just unlucky. What do you mean bad things happen? I got a friend well, who deals with the same thing. <laughs> he goes over to uh, another room. You can see uh, where he's walking is like into a um, a living room kind of area. And as you follow where he's going, you see that there's a laptop like thrown on the ground like a uh, splayed out like you would yeah. never lay your laptop like open yeah. on the ground like this yeah and he picks it up and he's like, unplugs the things and brings it over to you and he's preparing to show you some videos okay um meanwhile while this is happening to you um verde um we need to scroll back a bit um uh where were we with you um bar no under his, uh, ID under his drink, I believe, headed home for the night. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, and so you have a full name now, Roger Potts, in your investigation. And so the next day, what did you want to do? I'm going to the office. Going into the office. And Craig Hall. Yeah. Roger Potts and Craig Hall. Yes, and Craig Hall. You have his uh, ID. Did you give? How did you give Craig Hall? I give. I set the ID under his drink with a note that said, "I found an ID. I figured I'd return it to the cops." That's right. That's right. Uh, you gave two evidence, written and. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I you also have two took names. Craig Hall's address and everything. You're gonna yeah. be looking up both names in the database. All right. Um, well, which one would you like to hear about first? Let's do the big boy. The big boy? Roger yeah, Potts. Boy. Yep, yep. Roger Potts. Well, Roger Potts uh, does live in this town. He lives in the good old town of Golden Ridge. Um, it's, I'm going to draw on the map. I'm assuming I can erase it later, but if I can't, F me. <laughs> um, he, uh, he lives right up, actually, right here. In this area, you should be able to see a red circle. What? Yep. What? Well, that's alarming. Why is that alarming? Because our last investigation was right there, wasn't it? Yeah, yep. <laughs> that's pretty close to the, uh, <laughs> the first adventure I was like, that I'm was in town. Sure that corner right there is where our the first It was in that general happened. square up there. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> um Yeah, it's it's like a condo or something. Uh, or a or a duplex, I mean meant to say. Duplex house. Um he because you can you can see his prior connections with the police, like if he committed crimes, that would be in the debate database here. Um, I'm 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 saying that mostly because 
I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I feel like that's yeah. You'd be able to see prior um, convictions, yeah. you know what they're what they've been in trouble for, or their address, so on and so forth. Drunken, disorderly, um, gambling, like uh, fraud, stealing chips and whatnot, like that. Um, <gasps> stealing things in general. He's had a couple shoplifting. Um, he's had uh, a few tax fraud situations. Fraud seems to be the word that chases this man. It's not good for him, I suppose. No. He seems to be like the last person you would employ um, if you are a reputable company. All right. What do we got for the uh, second? Craig Hall. Craig Hall. Uh, this is an invalid license. Um, address does not exist. It actually just doesn't exist in Golden Ridge. Damn it. <laughs> it does say Golden Ridge on it, and it does give an address, but it doesn't exist. It would be the middle of an intersection on Main Street. Do I got any uh, prints the on it? The sewer. Uh, um, prints. Prints, prints. That, that's a good question um because it is plastic so it hold prints fairly well yes um it has been some time and there's been some mishandling i presume of this um but go ahead and roll uh notice with your investigator bonus not your alertness but your investigator so a plus two um, but then with the penalty of time, let's give it a minus four. So a, a total of your notice minus two. This is a very difficult one. There it is. Notice minus two. Total is minus two in the end. <laughs> Didn't give a shit. <laughs> okay, well. Um, we get, he did a plus four. Well, either way, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I, I just did that calculation in my mind. Yeah. It was doing, minus two anyways, so. Yes. Um, so to, despite the, the math incorrection, <laughs> it still is a very great roll there. Um, uh, for anyone watching, I th does that come out to an 11? Yeah, it comes out to an 11 total. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so it was a roll. It rolled 11, then added four to it from my notice skill. Then subtracted to it's thirteen. The 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 plus four there is your alertness and your investigator edges. Actually, um, total total is minus two, so it would be a nine. But, right. No, no, no. He rolled the, an eleven minus two total. The overall bonus would be a minus two, so it would be a nine that he rolled. Oh, so I was rolling without the bonus. Okay, gotcha. Right. What, you said overall bonus is a minus two. Yeah. Okay, so he rolled an 11, so minus 2 would be 9. Yeah, and okay. that's still a great success. Still a great fucking roll! <laughs> but, okay. Um, great uh, success. Good luck, Pickles. <laughs> I know, I, from a DM standpoint, I know Pickles is going, fingerprints, fuck. And I'm like, that's what you get for running a modern game. You don't have this problem in fantasy. <laughs> they can't get fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so when you scan these fingerprints in to the system, the system locks down. Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, it to gives run. you an error and says, please see administrator. And you know that just sends so many fucking flags up the system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> many flags. Oh, no. Like, undercover cop or something, you're gonna have FBI coming down and be like, hey! No, I mean, if it, even if it was undercover, it would still pull up prints. It would uh, still you're pull in up your office. Detail. Your office has no windows? Oh, shit. You got the... I thought every office in this building had windows. Why does yours nope, not have windows? Not because I'm at the bottom of the total pole. Yeah. He's uh, above well, the officers. He's a detective, but he's the bottom of the detectives, so... He gets an office. Yeah. It's just not a good one. I feel like you're about to say there was a red laser pointing through my window, but I ain't got no windows. So yeah. Yeah, I was going to say one of the officers actually has an office. 
It's that uh, has a Oh no, <laughs> even the low the beat cops get got a better office than you. Well, it's like like yeah. You know why that is? It's cuz he's on the payroll. <laughs> Dirty cops. So what what what's what what are we what are we doing pickles? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, you're sitting there um looking at your screen. Do you want to do anything? What the fuck? Your administrator would probably be the police chief, yeah? King gets an alert on his phone. We've got a job either, for you. Either that, uh, <laughs> lieutenant, captain, or a police chief, yeah. We've got somebody you need to whack. <laughs> Alright, I guess I'm gonna go see you. Uh, gonna put the uh, license in a baggie and stuff it in one of my pockets. Pickles, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, your camera just died. Oh, did it? It's still there for me. I mean, is it? Or did I just seem like I went... Uh, you look like... Remember, like, when your TV goes full step back before in smart TVs? When I remember what? When your TV would go full static. And you had to, like, move the antenna. Um, no, you're fine now. It looks perfectly fine, but that's just okay. it went full static. Anyways, continue. Okay. I just want to make sure uh, you were still there. I didn't lose you. I don't care about your camera. If you're still there, we're good. So, as you recall, the um, well, the the chief here had sent you guys on vacation, and he's the one who appears at your office doorway, Ooh. someplace that he's clearly not familiar with. <laughs> And looks around and then looks in, opens your door, Ooh. and uh, says, um, it seems you triggered a 405 on the system. I have no idea what that is. You found something that uh, somebody really high up has been looking for. And it locked me out of my computer. Why? I found it. Well, um, I don't know. Oh, this is relating to the uh, alcohol case you guys put me on, so. Well. It, it, okay, so the ID that they gave me what that I got, let's say it that way, was a fake ID. No address doesn't come back, name doesn't come back, nothing. But I ran the prints that are on the ID, and that's what locked everything up. Oh shit, what if it's my prints? No, if it, <laughs> if it was your prints, it wouldn't have come up. Oh, maybe you're right. <laughs> what if it's my prints that flagged the system? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't even think, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to you tell me? Oh, about... You've been very quiet ever since your vacation. I hope you had fun. No, it was not fun at all. But you, you'd never ask questions about it. I'm assuming you didn't want to know about it. And everything's been relatively quiet since I got back. Is there anything you want to tell me about? There's a lot of things I want to tell you about, whether you're going to listen or not, or throw me in a loony bin is another question entirely. Go ahead and shoot. Tell me, Verde, what's troubling you? Uh, what do you know about mimes? I know quite a bit about mimes. Okay, what do you know about the mimes in this town? Or around the area? We've been having a lot of issues. Parents having uh, delinquent kids dressing like mimes. I'm uh, sure you're familiar with the insane clown posse. Yeah, yeah. Juggalos yeah. and sorts. Those assholes. Uh, yeah, they're uh, it's a fad, right? With the kids, they dress up as mimes okay. and clowns, and they cause mayhem. All right, I'm gonna be super straight with you right now. The mimes that I'm talking about are not a fad that kids are running around threatening to kill people and getting shot and all that shit. That 
completely different. So the mimes I've run into uh, seem to be part of a cult of some kind. They That's think cool. that there's spirits in the woods that are trying to end the world. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you saw the report on the mime that got hung from the tree out across the road from that gas station, I right? I was just about to say, I just recalled that uh, you you were the one to turn that in. Bit of bad luck on your vacation, unfortunately. Yeah, no shit. So we got up to the cabin up there and got attacked by squirrels. <laughs> the raccoons squirrels. all over again. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not talking like one or two squirrels. I'm talking like a couple hundred squirrels at the same time. But you're fine? I had a shotgun. That's, well, that is fair. Um, why were there squirrels attacking you? <laughs> You're definitely getting fucking fired. <laughs> I have... Okay, so I have no idea. It was... I have no idea. Honestly. It's okay, Faraday. It's okay. I, I understand. Um... <laughs> no one could understand. No, nobody understands. <laughs> oh, okay, so... Faraday, I get it. There are people who do their job well and have always, always done their job well. And bad luck just follows them. I, 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 I truly thought you would enjoy some outdoors time. And the fact that a horde of squirrels <laughs> ruined it. I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's unfortunate, but, uh, it was it wasn't just the squirrels, but yeah. yeah. By the way, why'd you book us the lovers' cabin? This is a fair question. <laughs> the lovers' cabin? Yes, <laughs> that's what the dude at the office called it. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Now we're getting to the real questions. It must have been a bit of bad luck. Dude, this police chief is roasting you. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to make fun of me for? Or can I go find out what the fuck this alarm's about? Oh, oh, right, yeah. Um, the 405 error. Um, yeah, actually, I need to be taking that evidence. You said it was a card? An ID? Yeah, ID. Yeah, I'll take that from you. Can I take a picture of it real quick? No. So, if this we is gotta part stop of giving my... shit to the cops. So, if this is part of my investigation into this alcohol problem you guys set me on, I'm not gonna have this bit of evidence that I need to, you know, help track this guy down. The higher ups will need to uh, process it before you're able to have access. Fuck it. Tosses in the card. <clears throat> take it. Um, you, you'd put it in a bag, so he grabs the bag that you toss. So, I know very well I'm never going to see that ever again, aren't I? Probably. Um, because he quickly says, well, I uh, hope you have a good rest of your week, and, um, well, <laughs> good luck. And he leaves your office. That fucker always rubbing in your life. I think that guy has seen your character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's a witch causing a curse on you. He's the cause of your bad luck. Uh, I was going to say, I don't have the ID or the fingerprints, but I have everything written down for the ID. But everything on the yeah, ID Yeah, I mean, was there, there was anyway. no point in me not giving up the ID. Yeah, the ID was wrong anyway. The information was a lie. But at least we have the location of an inner intersection. That might have some significance. I don't know. We can always investigate that later. Yes. 
you do have the information for Roger Potts, who does live in the town of Golden Ridge near a previous site and that, where yes. things happened. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah I mean, this is good. Oh, go there, there, there was no reason for me not to give up the ID. I already know all the information off of it, and I have it written that, down. I mean, the ID is a lie anyway, but at least it'll take us yeah. to an intersection. Maybe that's important for some, like maybe that's a meeting spot. Maybe there's something in that area. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we've still got the information for Roger Potts as well. I, before we end, which I know is where you're going, Pickles, I would just like to point out that Fred is getting this close to quitting. <laughs> because there's no point in him being here if every time he tries to do an investigation, they just shut it down. It's going to be a long week. It's going to be a long week. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a long week on these strange town of golden ridge adventures absolutely are you wrapping us up or should i uh uh actually i, I want to see your wrap up here oh I, I mean i was just gonna wrap up the stream yeah oh okay uh, i was just gonna wrap up the adventure of okay well, what can happen next off to you what what will you guys find on this adventure of strange alcohol and peculiar cases um, there's Roger Potts. What kind of mysteries might he be hiding? And are there going to be more mimes? God, we hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Welcome back to Strange Town Golden Ridge, episode one of chapter three. We are happy to be back. Thank you, Mr. Pickles, for DMing. Um, thank you for playing through this with me. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, thank you, me, for being here. Um, <laughs> huge shout out to you guys for watching. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, you can always subscribe. Uh, and um, that's going to do it for this one. We will be back live next Sunday. Excuse me. Uh, yes, live next Sunday at, uh, what is that? The 13th, uh, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, whatever that is, wherever you're at. Um, in the meantime, go check out the Discord. Check out the Discord, the YouTube, the uh, And I Took That Personally podcast over on Spotify and Apple Podcasts called And I Took That Personally. Um, I think that's basically all we got. Thank you so much for joining. We'll see you next time. Later. Adios. Goodbye. I love you. Yes.